You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Pass me the lampshade, I'm drunk again. Blew my drug money on a quart of gin. Well, I am a cultured man with tastes discriminating But I'll settle for a tall glass of anything Well, am I the only one drinking tonight? I thought I was the only one that was good at passive aggressive <laughs> behavior. Oh, you got nothing on Doug Stanhope. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of aggression in this passivity. Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to chime in at any point, get up and just tap. Don't Hennigan the fucking show with your with your <laughs> unless Off you have like be- hilarity. You've become a verb. Oh my god! If if there's a way to make them both laugh, this is the Doug Stanhope second New Year's Eve podcast. Yep, because 2014 was such an amazing year. We it had was. To two, and we have so many guests. We're well into 2015 at this point, and what a year it's been! Well, for them, yeah. Looking you, back, it, it seems so recent. Yeah, we're we're uh, last Monday morning quarterbacking the new year. Mm. Uh, that that you, you hear talk with the the uh, the the smooth pipes, the smooth jazz pipes is Brett Erickson. On his way to Los Angeles yeah. with the lovely Kerry Mitchell mm. to try to start a fucking career at 47 years old. Yeah. I think Never he's too late. Do it. Operation Stanhope Coattails. <laughs> 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 yeah. And the filthy uncut Scotsman, my Hello! manager slash business partner, Brian Hennigan. Yep. Fresh back from a month in Tonga. It was we'll only three that. weeks. Well, that's in their time. Yeah. It's a month. That's right. Because they're, they're that's you're right. even thrifty on a calendar. Yeah. You go for a month, but it's only three <laughs> weeks. What a Scotsman. <laughs> and always, as always, as always, as often as possible, Chad Shank. And Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have the ladies. I was just thinking if we. You heard Brian Hennigan's laugh at his own joke. <laughs> Which, if we could have, if we could have your girlfriend, Brett Erickson, Carrie Mitchell, and Brian Hennigan, they both have. We were talking about it yesterday. If they were a couple and they were sitting next to you at dinner, because they both have these outrageous laughs that are contagious, but together would be so fucking annoying. Like a train wreck hit a wicked witch. <laughs> but as you pointed out, but in a loving sort of way, you get Hennigan's laugh at his own jokes. Yeah. They're the only funny jokes I've heard. <laughs> I don't know why that's a problem for anyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we'll fucking start with your uh, Tonga. Well, this started for Actually, hang on. Can I just say something yes. that made me laugh in 2014? Was yeah. uh, no, the debut, I think it was a debut album, comedy album release of Andy Sanford. Very funny comedian out of New York. Now he's out of New York. You can get his album for free on Spotify. Look it up, Andy Sanford. Are you flirting with other clients? No, we have I'm just saying no Andy Sanford is a very fucking funny I've guy. I've actually heard that, and I will listen to him, because it took me a million years to get around to Tom Segura, right. who uh, the uh, Rogan and the whole Death Squad people were all about, and I finally listened to Tom Segura, and he's fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, there we go. I hope. You know, sometimes I, 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 I'm so far away from comedy and I see so little of it <laughs> outside of my opening acts that I already know mm-hmm. that you go, wow, maybe they, you don't. Tom Segura, let me tell you a good uh, a Peoria Tom Segura story. He came there. And you know how da- uh, crazy Dan Conlon always uh, just makes a, crazy Dan a, a weird poster out of something off of the comedian's website. Well, Segura had a picture 
like a, a, a fake headshot of himself. And instead of a microphone, he's holding a penis. But it, everything else looks like a normal comedian headshot, like he's talking into it. Well, Conlon uh, uh, added this to the poster with either without, I mean, he says he knew it, but, you know, and he was trying to be funny, but it's on the poster. Uh, a, a male penis and Tom Segura is in, talking in into Peoria. it in Peoria, Illinois, in yeah, the yeah, if it'll play in Peoria yeah. town. Put that up at the laundromat to try <laughs> yeah. to draw. So him. Segura shows up and he's like, "What the fuck? What? That, that's not <laughs> supposed to be on the, the. We're trying to bring people. I don't. What happened? I when I was uh, I played that shithead at Stanford and Sons in uh, Kansas uh, City. One of the Glaziers. Gla- yeah, Craig Glazier. I had just done Girls Gone Wild, and I'm going to do a week there. And I show up, and there is a, a poster. It literally had to be at least eight foot by five foot poster. The entire picture window. Doug Stanhope coming to film Girls Gone Crazy or some like <laughs> ripoff. And he just like he had this whole thing that he wanted me to host something. He was filming at a bar. Oh, it's for a promotion. We're just gonna stop by. A, this is before I saw the poster. We do radio, and then we're going to go this <laughs> afternoon to a bar, and you're just going to host this. I'm filming. The, it's like a Girls Gone yeah, Wild yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not doing the, uh, And I show up, and well, the girls can't. Well, you don't really have to do anything. You just have to make an appearance. But no, he has a fucking like podium on the stage for me to get the girls to go wild. But the, it's Kansas City. You're not allowed to take off your clothes in a bar. So girls are not even going <laughs> crazy and i'm supposed to i'm just sitting there doing nothing but day drinking i'm like you're a fucking (laughs) asshole i'm here to do a show and you have posters saying i'm here to do your version of of clothed girls gone wild he's such a fucking rip-off fucking scumbag guy but he maybe he was just anticipating you sort of the china chinese wave of bootlegging (laughs) <laughs> no, that guy has a million like, stories about how he tried to, you know, he'll try to manipulate. And, He's always got a million schemes happening at once, too, right. so for sure. Yeah, and you, you're not in on any of them until you show up and you go, oh, by the way, while you're here, <laughs> you got to blow a guy on camera. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that didn't happen. Let's start with, uh, okay, Andy Sanford, there's a plug. Tom Segura, there's a plug. Boom. There. Kaching. Yeah. Here's another plug. Visit Tonga. Great place. Well, let's start at the oh, beginning. Well, I'm starting at the beginning with you because well, you. Me. We did. Me, uh, Bri- me Brian Hennigan? Yes. We, <laughs> we did nice. a, 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 I'm going to say a month long tour of Australia and New Zealand and you're going to go. It was three and a half weeks. Actually, it was five weeks. No, it wasn't. Including the week travel. No, including the week in advance where we had to be in, uh, it was uh, no. I left the states on November four, and I got home on November twenty nine. Is okay. that is that five weeks? Well, technically no. Well, good. <laughs> it is in Tonga, and in reality, no. Technically, also, technically no. But what way is it? Yes. <laughs> you, see, see, you just want to tell your funny stories about. I don't have any Tongan funny stories women. about Tonga. No, you started. You started a world. You were gone for like I was five gone for- months. You had to start visiting your mother in a mental institution. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in thank Scotland. you. This isn't a subject for comedy, you know. Yes, it is. <laughs> you did a. a Do you remember who you manage? Uh huh. I manage what? I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know they s- still do around the world tickets, but yeah, that's, that's right. why I you did. had to end up traveling. What's that on. noise behind me? Uh, it's, yeah. What? Hey, shut the fuck up! Jesus Christ! This is fucking professional broadcasting here. <laughs> and no one heard it. <laughs> So you had to do a, an around the world ticket, ticket, yeah, where uh, to first see your mother, first see my mother, then to see a friend in Barcelona, and then uh, get back up, friend. What, what you, this is sorry, not I, something. I, hey, Joby, pipe down. You guys, zip it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> sorry, you're Hold bothering on. Mr. Hennigan. I'll be right back. Uh, Chad Shank yeah, has to uh, take yeah. out the trash. <laughs> that should be a sponsored part of the podcast. Brought to you by Hefty Bags. <laughs> you were obliged. I don't know how deep you want to go into it. Well, your mother. And yeah, well, right, well, I think anybody's obliged if their mother's in, in, a, in some form of mental institution to visit them. Just that my mother's a fair way away. So it takes more effort. And yeah, so there. So that. So therefore, you're the way a good it worked, son. Did the she way, recognize you? 
Yes. And, you know, it brought a smile to her face. And, you know, it's very difficult <laughs> going into a, 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 like a locked mental ward. Uh, it's not exactly a, you know, a barrel well, of you'd fun. You'd have to be in a locked mental ward for Brian Hennigan's appearance to bring a smile to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! 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 And that leads us to Barcelona, oh. where you say you have Ow. a friend. You oh. have a <laughs> Yeah. I think I'm sure I've said this before, but early in our career, Brian Hennigan, when we were on the road together in the UK touring, when he'd get a phone call, he'd go in the other room as he always does because he's very secretive. But then he'd come out and I go, what's it about? Because I knew that it was about me because he, no one ever called him that was personal. It was always business and I'm his only client. So I knew it's, it's always me. business. So when you say things like, I went to visit a friend, uh -huh. I'm thinking, like, if it was Thailand and you said that, I'm going, oh, he's fucking kids. Mm -hmm. But Barcelona, <laughs> who's your friend in Barcelona? It was the uh, lesbian girl from Nicaragua. Oh. oh, yeah. and She's Belgian, so we, it's easy to meet in Barcelona. Oh, yeah. No, br the Belgian Hennigan, lesbian from Nicaragua? Brian Hennigan showed what seemed to be an emotion towards this girl. <laughs> uh -huh. and, well, she's very nice. And she's a lesbian. Yeah. He couldn't have her, so he... It's safe. He developed an emotion like a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> then he goes, occasionally will still go to have treated in places like Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. But there are worse places to have your tumor treated. Like an alien, he thought he would try feelings out for a while and see how it went. <laughs> <laughs> With somebody completely safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny, Brian. Thanks, yeah, Brian Hennigan. Yeah, people, people say people say you're not funny, but I know that I can show them. People that. are idiots. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so there, then I went on to. Uh, um, I met you Singapore, in Brisbane, where you got a no, it's, no, it's, it's, you it's, had I, to change planes. That's I'd where you got me those planes. shitty cigarettes, which I thank God you got me. Yeah, and then I went on to. Uh, I met you in uh, Brisbane at the lovely, so, lovely apartment. So we do the tour, and Brian has added on a. Because you uh, around the world around ticket. the world ticket, you have like twenty two. You're you're lit. I mean, it's a, it's an it's an underrated form of travel, you know, in the sense that you, the, the, for for basically the same price, you can have like twenty six. This this is a very good advert for Star Alliance. You can basically have 26, 28 stops as long as you keep going more or less in the one direction. So they'll, they'll give you they'll they'll give you wiggle room so that when you get into the whole Pacific arena. You can kind of double back a little bit and go to Tonga or Samoa or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I'd literally got to the, I, I was booking the round the world ticket, and you know, we Doug and I talk about travel a lot. We're, we don't have much else to talk well, about. We're kind of sad. But what uh, Brian does what I do with drunk purchases on eBay and Amazon, he does with drunk travel, where yeah. he'll wake up. <laughs> so and I did oh, book. Fuck, I'm, I'm I did book the. I remember booking the Tonga bit of the of the round the world ticket, and then going, oh, really. I really ought to look into this Tonga place. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, but, you know, but I'd done enough, I'd done enough Scottish research because we Doug had already found out that Tahiti and Fiji were prohibitively expensive. Oh, I'm not going there. So, uh, <laughs> so Tonga, I knew they're kind of friendly because they play rugby and you can kind of trust people that play rugby. Uh, I was a barometer <laughs> us yeah. travelers use. Yeah. That's something you can say that you know nobody else at the table who's American can test. Like, uh -huh. is that true? Trust a rugby player? Oh, I yeah, guess so. Yeah, Keep going. Never had one fuck me over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so we turned up and, yeah, so Tonga. And, uh, the good well, thing is, you go, well, you, you go, if you, here's the research. I went to the Wikipedia page and it says they are trying to develop a tourist industry, a tourism industry. That's right. Yes. You don't want to go to a place that has a tourism industry. Right. You want to go to a place that's developing one. Yeah. When you went to Nicaragua last year, yeah. it was. Yeah. So what you're saying is you don't want a tired old comedian as a client. You want a young up and coming comedian who's hungry yeah. for comedy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But who's, who looks young though? Sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's what in Tonga. Well, was. You booked it originally for what? Well, yeah, a, I booked a, it originally for like, I, I was coming as you like for like five or ten days after the, I was going to go to Tonga for ten days after. We closed the tour in Auckland, New Zealand, yeah. and you were going to go straight there for a ten week days. or ten days. Yeah. And then you, in the meantime, attached the, you know, we're done. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, now it's my retirement. Yeah. So you went, yeah, fuck so, it, I'll yeah, stay for a I month. I said, I said to you, was there, uh, uh, you know, if that, if this is the end, there's no, I can just stay for three weeks, can't I? And uh, you said, yeah. 
So I just stayed in Tonga for three weeks. And bounced around? Bounced around. I mean, it, it is it's a, <laughs> it is the stereotypical island paradise you always imagine going to when you think of the term island paradise. The people of Tonga are enormously friendly. It's a, Enormous and, and friendly. friendly. Yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah, because uh, it's a fairly, cons- it's not fairly, it's a conservative religious country. So they, they have a mix of... Not uh, beheading religious. No, no, no. Just, yeah. No, no. The religions, the, the, the religious people, we know how to deal with it. Christians. Right? Shame and, religious. Yeah, yeah. And they, but they also have, um, there's a fair degree of... Um, Abstinence religious. Yeah, Mor- there's a lot of Mormons as well. Because, oh, wow. but here's the thing: having said, having been there for a while, though, you can tell that the that uh, the Tongans are fairly astute in the sense that they know how to play the religions. Yeah. So, the, oh, you're the, going to build us a school? Get to it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we went to this village at one point, and the, uh, the throughout the village were these self-contained solar units that had batteries in them that provided illumination and electricity for the entire village. Every one of them had a plaque from the Japanese government, which had donated them to Tonga, for every village in Tonga. Then the water supply had a big plaque on it saying, supplied by the United States government. And then the, the, the school had been built by the European Union so the Tongans are pretty astute. I have a tattoo that says, uh, brought to you by Sabra Hummus, right, well, they, <laughs> right on my tailbone like a tramp stamp. But it's interesting. They basically treat the whole <laughs> world like uh, they treat, like because like like provenance, or not provenance, uh, produce simply falls on their lap. Like there's coconuts and pineapples and fruit everywhere. So they just... Yeah, you were saying like a restaurant ran out of papaya and they just go, hey, we're out of papaya. So someone ran to their house and yeah, grabbed some because yeah, like, they're yeah, just like everywhere. The, the, grabbed the, them out of the backyard. There, there, is, there is, you know, great fruit and produce growing everywhere in Tonga and it's freely available. And they, 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 they don't begrudge... Any, like if you, It's not like one of those, uh, you're driving down the road and you stop to pick up a, a papaya and someone's going to, hey, hey, that's my papaya. And everyone's like, oh yeah, of course you'd take it. Yeah, it, it sounds like a great place to do the uh, the my my own personal rehab I would that I always talk about it. doing. I would definitely recommend because he said it. there's not a lot of fun there. No, like I, the capital New Alofa, which it took me ages to learn how to say because it's got a couple of apostrophes in there. New Alofa, the capital. I mean, it would it would make Bisbee look like you know Rio. Uh, it's it's a place that doesn't. And that's where you fly into. That's where you fly into, and it's great because I flew in and I was on the yeah. So I was let me just go, let me just go to my little story. So I get on this Air New Zealand flight from Tonga, oh, sorry, from Auckland to Tonga, and uh, the, uh, the I'm in I'm in I'm in row two because I paid for it, and uh, I don't and, have uh, to apologize for yeah, first class. Yeah, and um, uh, there's like. It's not like you do anything else with your life that you... That's right. It's That's not, right. You don't go out and have right. fun or never pick bu- up a tab. Yeah, you might I, as well I, use I, that money no, for I, No, I, no <laughs> I now do pick up tabs. To, I've got, I'm now overcompensating. I'm, I'm picking up tabs that aren't even ours, you know, because you've guilted me into it. The, um, but I've never, I've, never, I've never had a prostitute, for example. I've never paid money that type of way. So you used all your hooker money to fly road to nonstop Auckland yeah. to Tonga. Yeah. I've never bought cocaine or anything so um <laughs> so uh why did you look at me when you said that do you think i want to sell you no, something i or? just you know you, you know you, you, uh, that it was that, just weird you know, that's, that's just, the way we write things yeah, off it's just, it's just the way that your body naturally moves <laughs> you know when you when you think of you know, people who are ruined by cocaine you sort of look <laughs> to, to somebody who's who's leaving peoria age 47 that's that's, 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 that's 47 <laughs> <laughs> they, anyway, so shush. You did the research. I know. So, uh, well, uh, the point is, so, and then, am I really? Are you really forty-seven? Oh, Forty-seven? I don't, I don't know. know. You don't I have don't a know. Wikipedia page. Is the <laughs> way to find out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, the uh, the the plane. At some point, you notice that on the plane, they've cha- that there's a slight change in what they're seeing on the sort of ladies and gentlemen, and it's. At some point, the the announcement is, "Your Majesties, Your Excellence," and I'm thinking, "Are they taking the piss? Are they like mocking us now? Is this what like is this some sort of jape on behalf of the 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 air crew that have had one one too many and they're just they're referring to their guests as Majesties now?" And it, no, it, I, so I called over a steward person 
And I said, what? And he said, oh, that's rule one, that's the king and queen, Tonga. <laughs> and, and and like Tom right in front of you <laughs> yeah yeah and, and I've, got a, I've got a picture which I'll, I'll send to Chile you can put up because I don't I want it needs to be surreptitious because you don't want to because Tom that means secretive for my listeners yeah. Tongans <laughs> Tongans are fucking massive they are they are good at rugby for a reason there's a few I mean they're Polynesians so there's a few of them that actually yeah. play in the NFL and different guises right mm -hmm. and they are fucking you would not fuck with them and therefore, you don't want to be caught like photographing the the king and queen, who are kind of like deities on some respect. You don't want to steal their soul with your yeah. newfangled yeah. Western yeah. Ghostbusters and, equipment. And also because the guy, the, the steward, the steward said that guy behind them, yeah, that's their that's their bodyguard, singular. But unlike other Tongans, he was very svelte, and therefore you realized he must be very yeah. fucking handy. He's carrying like, a gun. Like, like, you know, but he's, he's somebody who could probably just, you know, beat you up with his eyebrows, you know? So, but I did, I did, I did take a picture for the, cause I knew that I, this would, the, 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 the listeners of the Doug Stanhope podcast would like to see the back of the heads of uh, the King and Queen of Tonga. And I also, like, I, did you put your knees into their seat back a lot? <laughs> did you do like bingo where you put the tray down and then take a bouncy nap on it? <laughs> <laughs> and watch the person in front. But, but I did. I did. I did get the tape of. I, I played. For, I pressed record when they were about to do the next announcement, so you can actually hear Air New Zealand. That's this is what they say. They say Your Majesties and Your Excellence. If there's somebody on the plane, do you want me to play it? You know what? You play it, and then we'll have uh, Shaley That's actually right. download it, so it's good quality. That's right for the listener, but for us, so we can comment on it. Here we go. That's almost like proof. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and, and and then when then now uh, you've the, gone and done it. Uh, the whole flight, um, nobody who was a Tongan would go and you, including people who are in first class, would go and use the the bathroom that the king and queen were using. No one would, or no one could. No, they wouldn't. They were like they. It was like a. The, like the, the crew yeah, said, so, nobody will, they, they will all refuse to use it because that they will recognize that that is only for the king and queen. And even, by which time, even the New Zealish people, no, 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 people like me had already taken a poop. And uh, so that, that I knew that I didn't, I only got told of that afterwards. And I think out of respect, I might have, I might have gone along with it, but by that time, I'd already, you know, smeared the bowl, so I wasn't going to go back. So, but, uh, yeah, if I were drinking on that flight. See, that's where I was very glad because at one point you were talking about coming with me to Tonga. And, it, <laughs> and literally on that flight, I thought, oh, my God, if this if you were here right now and the, the king and queen, this could be a real diplomatic incident because we'd be flying into Tonga. They just point at you. As you got off the plane, and then you'd be taken off to Tongan prison. Yeah. Or it could be the opposite of that, where Doug becomes the Tongan comedian of all time and just oh, goes back gesture. and lives there. Yeah, yeah and yeah. just stays well, there. Funnily enough, that wouldn't happen because I went to see a comedy show in Tonga. Oh, Jesus, you told me about that, but I told you to save it for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm staying in this fantastic place, and normally I wouldn't like to... I don't, Normally, I wouldn't endorse something on air that I wanted to use again because I wanted to keep it secret. But the fucking... the Tonga funny bone, though. <laughs> no, the blue, the blue, <laughs> the blue banana resort in fucking Tonga is the dog's bollocks. I mean, that is the it's the mutts nuts, it's the cats nuts, it's everything. Oh look, I said something so funny. Hang on, Brett had a hernia. It's <laughs> like. It's all right. Everything's fine. Yeah, I, I don't think I, it's I, I, I just pausing. Yeah. I just have one cigarette in here, just one, just one. Thanks. So, um, uh, so the Australian people that own the Blue Banana Resort in Tonga, which is fantastic, uh, they one day the, the lady said to me, uh, "There's a comedy show in town tonight." Because by you know by that time I'd had to let on that I somehow wasn't involved with comedy, and yeah, uh, that's all this obviously without mentioning you, because then they'd Google you and find out this isn't comedy; it's drunken hate speech, as you used to say. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, uh, I said, really? And they said, I said, what is it? It's called, it's, it's the Laughing Samoans. I went, okay. How much Got is it? Got to paper the room. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, there was no papering the room in that. They, they, they had the biggest venue in the town, which must have been about 
one and a half thousand. Every fucking seat sold. I mean, and we, uh, we, she got tickets by because she called ahead to a friend type thing. And it was like watching the birth of humor in a, in a culture. Cause this was, and again, it was v- just exceedingly basic. Like one guy was sitting there. The opening band is playing rocks with sticks. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's <laughs> clack, clack, no, clack. smoke on the, the water. The opening band. You're smashing one, <laughs> one guy in the toe with a rock and laughing at him. <laughs> one, one of, one of the opening bands was actually just like the, the best hip hop dancers in Tonga dancing to music in a way that you'd get thrown off the streets in downtown LA if you tried it because it was so bad. You know, it was just really embarrassing and bad. But again, First break dancer. Yeah, but it, again, when you see innocent fun, you don't want to be a mo- like like there was something it's just very innocent. Right. These aren't these aren't people that have seen John Stewart. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like there there was a there was a great naivety to it. And the, the laughing Tongans, when they, sorry, the laughing if, Samoans. If, if I, if, if we ever saw anyone laugh in Costa Rica that was a Tico, a, a native, you'd go, what, 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 what finally made them laugh? Like laughter in some cultures, like, yeah, yeah I, I don't care what you're laughing at. I just want to see you smile. Oh. Like, so yeah, I would, I would enjoy a Tonga. Tell us about the. And, and it was just, you know, the, the set, it would be a setup. There was one guy who was, again, and this is in like pigeon English. Pigeon English, but, but, but clearly understandable English. Yeah. I mean, you know, it wasn't like it was. It wasn't like true pigeon, where you literally don't realize it is English. Uh, and uh, so, one of the guys was kind of dressed up like a woman. It's amazing how universal that is as a beginning into comedy type thing. Monty Python. That's yeah, what we were. Yeah, cut and the other guy on. was like the straight guy, and he'd be bosom buddies too. That's a great influence. Go ahead. Yeah, the other guy was like doing like they did a sort of like one guy was giving a news report and he cut to the reporter in the field, which is the fucking female guy, and that's basically what they did for fifteen minutes before I said, "Okay, I've got enough. I'm leaving." And uh, and uh, can you remember a joke? It was like I I'm I can, but I really don't think it's worth telling. <laughs> I Why mean, don't you try it and then Chaley can okay. cut it out? So there's there, it was basically uh, like the the um, the the straight guy said to the reporter in the field, uh, "So you're speaking to a policeman after the incident because they're talking about a car crash that they'd set up." Yeah, and these and did, did the policeman give you a number for uh, the number for the casualties involved? And the, 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 the reporter in the field said, nobody is very good looking, so I got his number. Oh! <laughs> and, <Yeah. I'm, laughs> and roars from the audience. I mean, the, the, it was like a laugh inferno. The, play, <laughs> the place. That's what it should have been called. The, the place erupted. They could, it was, it was, it was just joyous because you couldn't believe, because you were taken away. I was carried away by how much they were laughing at this and they fucking loved it. I think I get two like, 1960s joke books. For Christmas, like as gag gifts, and Bingo loves the yeah, you know, the stupid yeah. goofy pun jokes. One of them, one of them was for me, I think. It but was the idea that we could take one of those books and go to Tonga as producers, like uh, what was a that was the Woody uh, the Warren. Woody Beatty, Allen. No, Warren Beatty and uh, Dustin Hoffman. Oh, oh, fuck that terrible film, Ma- a single woman's name with an I. Yeah. Ishtar. Ishtar. Boom! For the I was win! Say Ishmael. Brett Ix- Merrickson. Brett Merrickson? Brett Merrickson. We could go as producers of, of Tongan comedy. Oh, David my. Tribble probably books a room there. <laughs> it's probably too lucrative. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but this place was mobbed. You know, like, it must be in a one and a half thousand. Tribble's got the room in uh, Tonga, but you don't get paid until you get to Samoa. <laughs> The end of the gig, and you have to double back yeah. to uh, French. You don't get French paid to the last gig, otherwise you won't do them all. Yeah, yeah. Was, you get paid in papaya. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was um, that was pretty much, and uh, you know, it was it was enjoyable just to experience that type of naive, like naive comedy. It's not insulting to call it that. Yeah, I get a, a lot of phone calls from you, which uh, when you're you know, you're not one to uh, call just to chat, no, but no. Uh, 
Yeah, I could tell you're bored out of your tit a lot. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was kind of. Uh, there was an abortive kayak trip for eight days, which I'll go into maybe later, not on this podcast, because there's, there's, there's issues. Pending charges. There's pending charges. <laughs> uh, but that was, I mean. The honest credit but card again, that charges again, But here's a little things that make Tonga brilliant. You know how annoying it is when you go to, uh, like, an underdeveloped or a developing or a third world country, however you care to categorize them, and people say you go to the market and you have to bargain for everything. Tonga has like native markets, but there's no bargaining. I fucking hate that when you go, <laughs> when you go to like, oh, you have to like, no, no, just tell me what the price is. Yeah. And they're very basic. Everything in the market in Tonga is always $3. <laughs> and all that changes from month to month or week to week is how much you get for those $3. So if it's right. tomatoes, it's tomatoes in season. You get a fucking sack load. If they're not in season, you might get one. And it's like, <laughs> how simple is that? Either way, it's three bucks. It puts the, Either it's way, it's three bucks. bucks. It puts the math on the uh, the guy supplying the product. That's great. Yeah, That's yeah. fantastic. So that, it was really, you know, that that type of thing is really fun. Where are you going next? Uh, back to LA. We're still debating. Uh, well, the whole Super Bowl thing. Yes. We're not the Super Bowl party here is officially canceled. I want to enjoy one yeah. once. And seeing who made the playoffs, my chances are like two out of 12 of having a team that I would like in the Super Bowl. So we're debating on where to go for Super Bowl if we don't do it here. If the Cardinals make it, maybe we call an audible and we do a smaller party here. That's not going to What are happen. the options? What are you thinking? Right now. Costa Rica, just because it's familiar. Uh, Caribbean, I want to go to Maho Beach. I probably talked about yeah. it before, where the airplanes fly like almost at your fucking head. The end of the runway is right at the beach, so planes, jumbo jets are going right over you, and I think that would be fantastic. There's YouTube clips, M-A-H-O. Look up Maho Beach on YouTube and imagine how fun that would be on the beach to have a plane almost fucking touching your scalp as you sunbathe. Uh, maybe if we if we want to go cheap and easy, maybe we go to Florida, to our favorite place down there at Treasure Island, where you're going. Brett Erickson, plug your gig. Uh, Belushi's and at uh, Fort Myers. Uh, yeah, uh, the 15th through the 17th of this January. should be out by then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, go see uh, Erickson. He's uh, actually one of uh, my favorite comics. Yeah. Aww. I don't... Yeah, he's not fucking staying in my house for no reason. <laughs> and everyone and producing the my... podcast and running the Stanhope store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, that's <laughs> come back, Greg Chaley. Chaley, Chaley, talk to you. <laughs> I, I never. It. That's not my business. So much has, merch. Has he sent you down to the market so with the magic much beans yet? <laughs> merch. <laughs> so, so the, okay. everyone I've put my stamp of approval on. You, you see where they've gone. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's I'm what, trying to decide if that's a joke that's, or not. That is sarcasm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Junior's my last hope other than you. The um... Unless Andy gets molested again. <laughs> <laughs> He's very cute. There's actually a pretty good chance yeah. of that. The um so, okay, so and uh so is that those are the options. I want to go to uh not for Super Bowl, but it's it's in season. I want to go to Gibraltar. Really? Why? Just because it's you know, weird. All right. You can uh, shoot Irish people for free. <laughs> is, that, is that a true story, Brian? <laughs> yeah, it is. Are you making up fibs on the podcast? No, no, no. Very famous uh, bit of SAS assassination. It's part of Spain, but it's English rule. Yeah. yeah. It's and a it's, little peninsula. Yeah. Very rocky. Don't, don't say things like it's part of Spain. Well, it's attached. To, it, it's attached to Spain. Yeah, it should fucking. It should be. Uh, there should be a revolution. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not against going over and drinking some local beer and starting uh, that. Uh, but yeah, don't need a visa. No, you. Oh uh, yeah, <clears throat> no, yeah. Not if you're doing. Not uh, if you're not working. A, yeah. Which you're not because you're retired. I'm. I'm pretty <laughs> retired. Yeah. Here's here's my retirement plan so far. Hold on, let me get a notepad. I have a list of shit that I go. I maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll try this. So far, it's been nothing but drunken Netflix on the couch. But you need a month of that to work your way into retirement. But <laughs> like I got the. The new material has worked out. Uh, the UK, which uh, <laughs> I dread, and uh, Europe, Europe are the only places that I haven't burned it out pretty much. If I, if you have an idea out there, 
I need to f- I need to film this. I need to put this out. And it's a matter of the only place in the states that we have gone over and missed that's a usual major mi- city. Mi- major city that I want to go to where I could film it is Minneapolis. Uh and we didn't go to Minneapolis cuz the place that we've played there like when you play a place and you sell it out and you know my audience drinks the fuck out of any I I'll put my audience up against anyone and we know person it's true. for person yeah. that I I bet I triple the fucking next guy in we know alcohol that sales. We, and the venues that we that we work with that are that we work with on a regular basis they tell us how much yeah. your audience is drinking they're like fucking awestruck <laughs> yeah those when, when we were in <laughs> when we were in Australia Brian would warn them ahead of time, and then you'd have people like running out in the middle of the show in panics because they're out of beer before the fucking opening act is off yeah. the stage. Eight, like, 800, alcohol. 800 seat Greek wedding venues were running out of alcohol. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's so, so yeah. Uh, and so when a, a venue that you know you've kicked the shit out of in a good way, tries to come back with a worse deal in Minneapolis yeah. and start finger fucking you about details. And you're already, I think that uh, place was already like a ticket mastery kind of yeah. place. They're already charging a fee and now you're giving yeah. us a worse deal. Yeah. So we need to find a good Minneapolis. And venue. I think I might have one, but the point is we're always open to hearing from people. Yeah. But please, if well, I have where, real, does, real where does Garrison Keeler play? He plays Lake Wobegon. Well, that's I'm trying to perfect. think of like a place I haven't played in the last year. Like there was, it, 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 we're going on a year and a half since I started there working are, this there, set um, out. There are there the are. first four or five months there, don't count. There's always, I mean, actually, um, Houston. Houston, I played recently. No, right? not that recently. No, no, no I have to look it I've up. I've kept, I've kept track. There's actually um, Houston and Dallas. Well, here's the major thing: get on the <laughs> fucking mailing list yeah. on my website because Twitter, maybe you see it. If you if you're on the mailing list, you'll know. You you play a town. And, you know, word spreads, your name is out there. And after you play a town, invariably you get four or five emails. Hey, when are you coming to St. Louis? Because you were just in St. Louis and they probably overheard your name somewhere. I was just there fucking eight days ago, you fucking asshole. <laughs> get on the mailing list. It's a quick and easy. Yeah, it's always good when they pre- preface it with, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's uh, that's usually that's the guy that's being uh, roughly escorted out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest fan. <laughs> Fuck! I drove all the way from to yell at you <laughs> and ask you questions yeah. during your show. Yeah. I drove all the way from to yell at you. That's a great town <laughs> to a, yell at you. I love that. That was the blank, fill in the blank. No, I like it. I, like I think that. there to are many comedy audience members who come from To, to Yell at You here. America <laughs> to a, the show. It's yeah. an Indian reservation. But Brett, <laughs> you, don't, yeah, but Brett, you don't understand. They're helping the gig. I know. They're doing their best to help you out. Yeah. That's yeah. the art of comedy. Don't you know that? I've been there. Okay. I saw a tampon get thrown at him. Really? A couple of weeks ago. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, was that in Safeway? No, no, I had a... That was a Peoria. That Peoria was the Peoria show. About this. Yeah, why don't you listen to the podcast? Oh, I listen to all the podcasts. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Do you, do you hear the them one. or do you just listen? I listen to every... I listen to all the ones Doug listens to. Both I of them? I listened to like three. <laughs> I had to listen to James. No, 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 no. No, listen. I did listen to that one. The po- what you, th- you threw me by saying a couple of weeks ago. A couple of yeah. weeks ago weeks. we did the podcast. Oh, I see. Weeks. Yeah. Okay. Months. Okay. Months. Who gives a fuck? Does anyone really know what time it is? Does anybody, <laughs> Does anybody really, really care? Hey, listen, there's somebody else at the table, you know. Yeah, I know that Chad Shank. There's no room for me in this conversation. That yeah, was like yeah. I'm that was like the story. Chad, Chad Shank will be here for the Super Bowl party just to throw out the people Whoever who don't listen up. to the podcast or don't <laughs> listen to my tweets and want to show up out of the blue uninvited, and he will be the only person you meet and is your worst fucking nightmare. But we just, should, we, just we, then... We should put up a, a thing outside, line starts here, <laughs> and just have see who like, stands there. Just then when you said that, there's someone else at the table here, that was like the typical comedy audience member who you're talking to who is like, oh, don't, it's, it's Cheryl's birthday. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. It just came out all stumbly. Chad Shank and I on Christmas. <laughs> That's my the, thing. After the stumbly l- comedy. That's what you're going into LA with. 
yeah. stumbly comedy. I just have dumb interjections. I know when it's good to just let other people talk about good stuff. So we've been watching. Uh, well, playoffs start this weekend, but we've been watching football as it winds up. And we were Chad was over. Oh, that wasn't even football. That was Christmas. Oh, was it? I think Christmas? it was. I think it was Christmas. It's been a whole. There was this whole series of football. There was. Uh, Thursday night football, then there was Saturday football, then there was Sunday football, then Monday night football into there was a Christmas Tuesday Eve. night. There was a Tuesday. That, that was a oh. couple, that was last year with the, or two years ago. That, there was Tuesday night football when Minneapolis's dome collapsed. Oh, yeah. This is just going into Christmas. There were four out of five days of football going into Christmas Eve on the Wednesday and Christmas Day on the Thursday. But one of them was that's a lot of drinking, yeah, is my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever the day was, it had to be football because we had the massage there was, therapist there here. It was Christmas because I missed last football. It was Christmas, I believe. Maybe we just had the massage lady here without football. Maybe she just made it seem like During Christmas. football, we found a great massage therapist through Gretchen Bear, at Gretchen Bear. She's a local artist at Plug, uh, B-A-E-R. I think. Oh, fucking cocktails. I love you so much, Carrie Mitchell. Thank Carrie you very much. Mitchell. Even though you guys get all the packages, they all come to 212 Van Dyke. <laughs> and as I implore you always, we love packages, especially bingo, even if it's something you just stole from work and shipped on their dime. So it's Christmas. I'm getting all these packages, but everyone's fucking staying here now. The Chaley's are here. Hannigan's coming, Brett Erickson, Kerry Mitchell. So every day, postman, uh, uh, I got to go out to the gate and fucking grab whatever it is, UPS, <laughs> FedEx, three times a day. Uh, uh, and I got to run out and get in all these boxes and fucking none of them are for me. <laughs> but the funniest one was that you had to bring in all the mailing. Chaley has all the, like, the packaging he ordered for to do merch, to sell merch. <laughs> so this is like an 80-pound giant crate of cardboard boxes. And I'm fucking sitting there with fucking two hernias and no help trying to fucking, I had to unpack it and, and bring it piecemeal down to the other fucking house. <laughs> Everyone, Chaley's out of town. And I get nothing over and over again. I got one Christmas card once, and it said Doug Stanhope. And I'm like, ah, oh, finally, something for me for Christmas. And then I look at the bottom, and it says, care of Brett Erickson and Carrie Mitchell. I'm like, <laughs> just, you just put it to my name. My mom sent me a Christmas card, and I, I kept telling her, just you know, address it to Brett Erickson at 212 Van Dyke. It's fine. It'll get there. But she knows that's not where I actually am. And she's from the Midwest, so she's just convinced that won't work. Exactly. So she addresses it to Doug Stanhope, you know, attention, Brett Erickson at the bottom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Holy shit. Holy shit. What the fuck was I talking about? I knew if I stopped talking about it and started. The masseuse. The masseuse. The masseuse. Okay, yeah. So we find this mas Thank you, hack oddity. We find this uh, masseuse that works really cheap, and she's really good. So she's I said, very hey, listen, good. if you want to set up. A black knob, the house is attached. This is the suicide house, and it attaches to the Van Dyke house. So we just, she sets up in here all day during football, and people will come down and get a massage during a game they hate or when their team is losing, and she'll just work all day out of the house. And she's fucking great. And it was whatever night. It was football. She is a great right. masseuse. Whatever it was. It was football. She came up. And she's not a drinker. She's very holistic. And I had to like woodshed her about, listen, I'm not into that whole, you know, take this journey and I want you to bring yourself and, you know, focus your shocker shit. I said, if I could have a flat screen TV on the floor facing up into the face mask, I'd be watching football while you do this. <laughs> I just want you to rub me. Why isn't that I more hurt. relaxing, by the way? Why can't you ever do that in a masseuse place? You know, hey, can I watch TV? Yeah, like, yeah, what, it was sport clips. I know. I've been to those places. It's great. <laughs> you don't have to make up chatter with the fucking lady cutting your hair. She doesn't care about you. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to watch a game. Hey, why can't I get sponsored? By I'm going to fucking start a franchise. <laughs> It's going to be Sport porn clips. clips. It's just, oh. <laughs> we just, we just watch porn. You just leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, but it, it was the first time she hung out late and we're hammered. Mm. And she just w went so fucking weird on us. Beyond hammered. That was the first time I was in Bisbee. I remember looking at Stanhope and I was like, this got really fucking weird tonight. <laughs> 
Because she's all holistic y, uh-huh. but she's also like, she, I remember she's trying to tell me jokes because she thought about doing comedy once, but the mm. quote, I'm not funny though. So I, fishing but, for a compliment well, why, there. Yeah. But, yes, you no, are. No, 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 she wasn't. She was no, saying of course openly not. that she was like, why would you want to do that? Well, she wants to become, she wants to learn how to be funny. Because it's not one of her traits. So De- deficient she, in that area. It her comedy chakras are not in line. Whatever. It turned into me, Chad Shank, and Reverend Derek, our fucking house potato. <laughs> Beautiful man. House potato. <laughs> In the UK, in the UK, in the UK, we'd, we'd call that Spud. You like <laughs> Spuds McKenzie? So it was just us and her, vaguely sober. I think she had a couple of drinks. Gretchen said, "I think maybe she's allergic to alcohol because they had brought." It. Oh, wait, you, Kerry Mitchell, you want to tell the story because you went out to see a band with her. So yeah, this was before. Yeah. So, yeah, this was definitely Christmas. Massages are done. Christmas night, right? Christmas Okay, night. so it was Christmas. It wasn't football. Either one. It doesn't oh, matter. No. The night is over. They decide to go out to see a band with wacky yeah. massage lady. We went to go see, uh, I think it was Melissa Reeves. From oh, yeah, yeah. Melissa's. She fantastic. was fantastic. Yeah, and it was a Local super musician. fun show that started off awkwardly and ended the same with Miss... Uh, the Be- massage because lady. Because home Let's size. Not use her name because she okay, does Okay, that a one. We'll massage. say home skillet. Uh, <laughs> I look to my left, and uh, there's someone like jelly rolling, floundering on the ground. Mind let, you, let me just in the aisle. Describe Melissa Reeve is kind of like uh, uh, what's her uh, uh, Melissa? Uh, other one. Like a Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin. Yeah, yeah. Janis Joplin. Yeah, Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, yeah. Janis Joplin's scratching. There's a lot of scatting. It's not something that you do the worm to. No. <laughs> No, no. Unless you're a free spirit. All right, you're, or even the right. mashed potato. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and here's home skillet frying on the floor on the aisle in the church like place. Yeah, uh, bingo, not to a, an embarrassing level because she's bingo. She can pull off cute when she's weird and insane, but you go, you, you don't want to be bigger than the show as an audience member. Uh-huh. And evidently, she made the show about her. <laughs> she's just helping the show. <laughs> Like someone speaking in tongues too much at the revival. And you're, like, you're taken away from the preacher, yeah. lady, all right? Yeah. You're, you're healed. We get it. Yeah. Wow. The spirit anyway, is talking so, so, to you. So cut back to your first night with her, Chad Shank. Well, yeah. So yeah. after that, they come back. We're sh- so oh, she got, after she, that. She got yes. filled with the spirit at the uh-huh. church at the Melissa Reeves show and then came Everything back here, here to give, to give Chad a blowback of the spirit. Yes. No, not me. <laughs> All right. At that point, back here, it was probably just me, Chad, and uh, Reverend, Reverend Derek, Derek talking about you know how to uh, you know kill a lot of people at once. Or... <laughs> Too drunk, should have been our, in bed already. Our regular late night. She comes back and she's she just was again. They're warped memories. I remember she kept she telling Chad and I to fuck in front of her repeatedly. Like no, no, you guys. I want to see you fuck. Like not. She didn't want you to fuck repeatedly. She kept telling you repeatedly. Uh, to I don't fuck. know. Either there's a you. difference. Oh, thank there's you. There's a slight. Well, there's a slight yeah. difference yeah. in little, weirdness. Yeah, the little house with the prairie <laughs> teacher. It's weird. Even even <laughs> Reverend Derek got left out of that. <laughs> Can I get any play in this? Thing? And then Derek, I want you to clean up after it's over. <laughs> <laughs> But then she like she took off her shirt. She, Whoa! She was topless, slapping her bags oh, okay, around. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and she's a lesbian too. On what? top of it, but she's a she's a uh, third base softball lesbian. You know, not a hot yeah, porn yeah, lesbian. She, yeah, I think I felt. I remember, like you said, there's just moments that I remember, and I remember feeling kind of like a dick because when she took off her shirt, I looked at Stanhope and shrugged, and I was like, "Well, they're female." And I was, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that was a fucking dick thing to say right in front of her." Was, Is this podcast worth not getting a massage again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she listens to podcasts. Okay. But she, uh, at one point, well, that's what I'm not sure. She probably listens to probably like, listens to Gretchen though. She, She's like, I, because I wouldn't, I, I usually don't get a massage because I'm too lazy to shower. 
Uh huh. So I'll usually there's enough people. <laughs> By the end of the day, she's you know, done six or seven yeah. people, and she's gonna be tired. And she's like, "No, I, just lay down on the floor. I'll just adjust you really quick." And she gives a fuck of a massage. So I had to get Chad Shank. I'm like, before you judge her for her weirdness. And Chad Shank got on the floor, and he's a big fucking dude. Oh, Chad and Shank's she's big. getting fucking elbows into him. Oh, and he's yeah. Like, she's yeah. hurt. I was sore the next day. I had to try to remember why the fuck I was so sore. <laughs> what the fuck happened to me over there? Yeah, she's bad. Did I fuck so. Doug Stanhope repeatedly? Yeah, I remember. I remember repeatedly being told to fuck Stanhope in the butt. I'm not sure if I did or not. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, she was by the other night, and she she came by the next day, and she's been just as weird since. So it's not like she was yeah. like uh, on substances, yeah. and she's all holistic. And, yeah, yeah. You know, the top is down. Yeah, it, she's she's that weird. And you know what? If you can fucking give that good a massage for a buck a minute, you'd be as fucking weird as you want every football yeah. Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah, not that weird. She, I, well, she's learning to take. Ah, fuck it! I stayed too long. That's my fault. I'm it's sorry. funny again yeah, because when we were in Australia at one point, I, I, had a, I had a massage at this place, and it was the worst massage of my entire life. It was like being poked by a fucking angry kitten, and it was. And I, at one point, I stopped and I said, "Listen, can you be much firmer? I mean, much firmer than this." And she, she said, went, "No." She was no. She went. There's this voice that. That told you this was not going to get better. She went, okay, I, 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 and it, you know, there's not so you the, can't. That's what you said. Yeah, that uh, the, uh, uh, I lost my uh, the palsy piano finger yeah. massage. Like, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, as ex- Norm Wilkerson was doing it, and he wasn't putting any back into it. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna touch your. Skin. So that's the whole point. She, I mean, I've had a massage. She is brilliant. I, I fuck with her. She's gotten to a point where you can. Like, oh, I good. told her her music is shitty. Oh, that yeah. should be a genre oh. of music. Is massage oh. music? Ugh. It's fucking terrible. I don't mind Enya. <coughs> well, <there's>, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind a little Enya when he gets a massage. But she plays fucking plinky plonky jazz. Well, I, I got her to play some swing band. Oh, shit. she is on the plinky plonky. <laughs> She was playing some stuff that would only be sold. She's at on a the plinky plunky. Place. Yeah, like, yeah. It's to relaxation oh, music, and you no. go, "This is not relaxing." No, it's really tense the and that, anger. Oh my god! I, I actually tried to remember the name as I was walking out of here. I saw the CD, so I could tweet that guy and say, "You just ruined my massage. <laughs> Your fucking music is so bad." Yeah. I. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, fucking Reiki. That's that was my favorite fucking part of the thing. That was she, a, she's a, a reiki time. person, yeah. and and we, we don't mean she p- gathers leaves. <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> I just I I don't remember the lines. Reiki, reiki, I remember it great because I was fucking on the side of it, and it was the she you baited her in with fucking oh about reiki and you know oh it's the movement. Of energy and it helps to heal you. And she was doing her whole oh, sales that's right. pitch. She, and she, no, wait, wait, she <laughs> wanted to do Reiki on you or somebody, and she goes, "Can I do uh, some Reiki on you?" Mm-hmm. And it's just a movement of energy. I don't even yeah. have to touch you. And I go, "Then why would you have to ask?" Oh, <laughs> Zing! Go, why wouldn't you just give them Reiki without him knowing? She goes, "Well, it doesn't work if they don't accept it. They have oh, to." So okay, it would, okay. So I, it would I, be I can, Reiki I buy rate. That so you, you, if if they don't say yes, I'd it's Reiki rate. Reiki rate. That that's not even the one I was talking about. Okay. Oh, what was what you talking about? The funny one was whatever you we were talking to her about it and she was just, oh yeah, it's, it's a movement of energy. It heals everything. And Floyd was right there. And immediately on the heels of her sales pitch, you turned around and said, we'll give some to Floyd because he has ass cancer. Floyd, does, yeah. Floyd was just diagnosed with ass cancer. So, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, Reiki is ass cancer. Yeah, fucking shit. And it just stopped. Yeah, by the way, like, Floyd. Oh, wait, I'm, it's not that effective on yeah. ass cancer. It doesn't work on that. <laughs> Flo- <laughs> no. Well, Flo- wait a minute. It's kind of a gray area in that. But then she walked over to Floyd to give him, well, here's some aromatherapy. And she was trying to show him aromatherapy, and Floyd turns and dead pens. How is that on ass cancer? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we don't want to lose Floyd because he's an important cast member. 
He's like the he's like our Charles Bukowski lookalike. Oh, he is yeah, a yeah, Bukowski lookalike. He's always smiling, even with yeah. ass cancer. Like he had to stop drinking. He is very much like that town drunk from the one oh, show. Yeah. Uh, Andy Show, the Andy Griffith. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Otis. Yeah, yeah. The Otis. Okay, yeah, and yeah, he he operates the lift. Just comes over, goes right to the plastic jug, has a glass, has a smile, tells a dumb joke. Fort He's yeah. fucking fantastic. And then he stopped drinking immediately with the ass cancer, but still big smile on his face. And you're, but you know, this guy's like a hardcore drunk, and to sit there watching oh. football that's boring anyway. It's an excuse to drink, around. and he's just sitting there hammering cranberry. Can he juice. do? Can he do the smoking shit? Like so the marijuana he, stuff? He yeah. could. He's. Uh, I don't want to get into personal shit. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. If somebody. So, somebody told him the other day. Hey, say. Here. I just want to say, people, uh, say a prayer for Floyd's ass cancer. If we could just all pray. <laughs> Uh-huh. We're all holding hands around yeah. the podcast yeah. table. Join us. You know what? But, sure. Yeah, if, maybe if you could go online and buy a 1950s uh, beer tin from his uh, eBay. eBay Emporium, that'd be more yeah, helpful. I wish I knew his uh, eBay name. I'd plug yeah, that. That's true. What's it called? It's Merchants and Miners is the name of his well, shop. Find it. So that'd you know what? It. Yeah, fucking Google Merchants and Miners Antique Shop in Bisbee. <laughs> Call up and say, hey, Floyd. <laughs> How's your ass cancer? Never mind. What's your uh what's your uh, eBay name? I'll buy some shit from you and support your ass cancer. I the thought of him dying. When I thought if you've been into his shop, he used to have an antique shop in Denver called Dead People's Things, which I thought is that <laughs> is that the greatest. Awesome. He's a really fun guy. His shop is like three it's three stories and like probably at least 15 different rooms. You just, you literally get lost in there. Oh, yeah. There's like when, the catacombs you, there, in the basement. There, 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 the catacombs in the basement, right? There, 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 there's like three layers. And I'd been coming here for like two years before I discovered the catacombs in the basement. <laughs> and the only thing that's bad about it is when you go into the basement of Floyd's shop in Bisbee to find things, and it's, it's entirely uncategorized down there. It's not, it's not even a yard sale. It's just stuff. Yeah. It is genuinely like going into the basement at the end of Silence of the Lambs. Because you feel that the, at any point somebody's about to attack you and there's not enough light. But there's also... <laughs> and, but, and they're wearing night vision goggles all, and they can see you. But there's, all, but there's also you. some very interesting vinyl down there. So you're like... <laughs> <laughs> so it's worth it. But if he were to pass, die from ass cancer, all I could think of is my mother was a hoarder but she lived in 350 square feet. Whoever would have to go through all of that shit at Miners and Merchants or Merchants and Miners. It's Miners and Merchants Antique Center. You can find it on Yelp. And uh, they, I'm pretty sure you can. that's how you find it on eBay. And they've got a shitload of interesting stuff. And yeah, you can help yeah. stop and ass cancer. Floyd's awesome. That's right. Yeah. He has that, like, he'll find stuff he knows I like. Half of the coolest shit in my house is stuff he just brought yeah. over. I thought you'd like this. A yeah. joke phone, yeah. like an old uh, yeah. like, 70s truck stop thing where you put a quarter in, it's a telephone, and it'll tell you a recorded joke. It doesn't work, <laughs> but it looks cool as shit on your wall. He fucking gave me a, a, fucking, a old school amyl nitrates from the 20s. <laughs> when they were like legal, you'd sell them for whatever reason. And I, yeah. Uh, we could have used those uh, when the chick wanted us to <laughs> fuck uh, the other night. If we're going to fuck repeatedly, <laughs> I could use some amyl nitrate. Amyl nitrate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me check my thing. I got to piss. Uh, boo, boo, boo. So, yeah, we probably do Europe. And, yeah, let's face it. And UK. Yeah. UK and Europe, we're going to book. Yeah, I can't fucking... I'm not starting another fucking... Working on another new set till I get this recorded. Yeah. And we've, we're have we waffling on how to do that recording. I want to do something weirder with it. Yeah. And by the way, we always we always welcome ideas. We're very, we're very open source here. Yeah, hey, but, I read your fucking emails. I just don't get back to yeah, them. Yeah, so. and also, but the thing is, we do like detail. So, hey, record it in this continent isn't detailed. Occasionally, I go on Facebook and I see how many... Asia's good. Yeah. You know, if you're going to come to us with a proposal, have detail. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't just go play Woody's place. Yeah, there's a great town here in Inglewood. Inglesing. I drink there all the time. Yeah. I can get at least 10 people in. Yeah. No, I, I'm. T- uh, oh, shit. That I fucking wanted to mention that. But yes, I do read your emails at Doug at DougStandup.com. Occasionally, I will go to Facebook when I'm bored and see how many people. Have, have ignored your advice. Where it says right <laughs> on my Facebook page, do not email me at Facebook. I don't check them. Email me here. And there's a fucking thousand emails. They probably think that's a I'll filter of some sort. Yeah. yeah occasionally oh, yeah, I'll that, look at that, how many I know there that's, are. And that's I something else that is worth pointing out. On the website, there's a, there's a, there's a, there are two forms. There's one for business and there's one for to reach Doug. Both of those work impeccably. If you send something to reach Doug, it gets to Doug. Yes. Yeah. If you send something about business, it gets to me and, and Doug. Doug. I will only respond to it, or Doug will only respond to it if it if it's in the for business pile. If it's about fucking business, <laughs> okay. What a stickler! Well, Jesus. Then I just let you deal with it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I the the point is yes, I don't get back to your emails often enough. Now that I'm retired for a while, I'll probably get bored and send some. Uh, Drunk returns if it's important. If you're going to kill yourself, whatever. I can't get all, all I can't. If you're going to kill yourself, yeah, don't I, email anyone uh, hoping to, they stop you. Yeah. yeah. Someone Maybe contact them directly. If they kill themselves this year, they want me to read their eulogy. So that's cool. That's I, would, cool. I would be into that. So. Yeah, I, I still get a lot of suicide emails and I can't keep up. I get yeah. I, it's fucking playoffs. Yeah. Playoffs. <laughs> and, and you know what? Go fund yourself. How about that? I if if I I could have like most of my Twitter feed would be hey this so and so is doing a Kickstarter GoFundMe thing I'm not gonna do it like if, occasionally I will retweet that but I can't just have my entire Twitter feed be begging on someone else's behalf I can't do that many even if I know you I, I, yeah I'll. I'll also if, 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 this is important. If you send me a fucking please retweet, my uh, nephew has neck cancer, please give or at least retweet. And I look at your, your Twitter account and you're not even following me, which is 90% of <laughs> Oh, shit. That There's just, a certain they, aspect of hospitality or something. They, they get on, people will just, and that's all they do all day. Instead of fucking getting a job yeah. to pay for that, to just tweet people they think. Will have enough followers to, that they'll retweet it and just begging money. They're, you watch their Twitter feed every. Hey, uh, fucking Screech from Saved by the Bell. Will you? <laughs> it needs my, bail money. My, ne- <laughs> my ne- nephew has neck cancer. Hey, whoever. Uh, and, and it's Donald yeah. Trump. So what you're saying is, if they don't follow you, fuck you and your yeah. neck cancer. Yeah. Expect, <laughs> it's expect a- abuse. <laughs> expect me to abuse you. If you're one of those guys who just begs anyone of any fucking limited notoriety retweet, over and over, retweet. and it's yeah. clear that these people, when you look at their feeds, they're not your fan. If they actually listen to a fucking one of your specials, they'd be horrified. Right. Yeah. All they've done is look at the number of Twitter followers oh, you've got. Yeah. Expect to be verified status. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, it, and yeah, and, it, and it's just a simple breach of etiquette. You don't do that. Yeah. Why you wouldn't even just click follow? Yeah. Well, I don't want to clog up my Twitter feed with all this famous people. Yeah. <laughs> God, fuck you. Yeah. So much of it is so your fault, too. There was one guy, he's dead now, thank God. I, I, I have a folder in my Hotmail for all the Kickstarter fucking beggars. <laughs> and <Whoa. then>. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. It's just like all the emails. Can you imagine again. what Mick Jagger's like, one's hey, like? I, uh... I, I want to go to community college, but I don't have money. Like, it's, everybody's probably. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, just we all have stepmoms. Problems. And one guy that was dying of a, like, heart failure, and he knew since he was eight years old, it was like a Hedberg story, where Hedberg knew that he had a fucking defective heart, and he's like, fuck it, I'm going to run with life. This guy had four children, knowing that at any moment his heart could give out. Since he was eight, that he's not long for this world, yet spit out four children. And now you have your fucking fake wife fucking as a 
I just I just kept I click on that every morning during my morning hate period and hope he was dead. And I was dead. Never retired from hate. Uh, <laughs> if only you could take fifteen percent of that. Happy New Year! That's that's enough of podcasting for this year. I appreciate all you guys, and I appreciate the people who do send shit to the house and weird people who occasionally show up and then leave in an orderly manner. And people who come to my shows and get yelled at because you don't know how to handle yourselves. Everything I complain about, I love because that's what I love about this business. I like to be miserable and I like to complain. That's what makes me happy. Jesus. Every end of every podcast. Every podcast. <laughs> closing is spilling a drink. This is Chad Shane. And when I'm at Stanhope's, I drink plastic jug vodka. Cause there ain't no other option. Plastic jug vodka. What's your favorite brand? Tweet me at at Doug Stanhope or tweet Chad Shank at at HD Fatty. That's HD Fatty. Hyman Doberman Fatty with a Y. <laughs> Hyman Doberman? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Hey Fuck It podcast. It's New Year's Eve, so we're going to just drop in here and again as we get more and more fucked up. And uh, I feel pretty good. Actually, we're just starting to talk like normal people I rather than there me. There are a number of issues un unaddressed. I think so too. I can't remember a <laughs> single one. No, no, neither can I. But no, actually, the fucking police beat. But, uh, yeah, no, I wanted to do the, more of the police beat with Chad Shank. And then you forgot the police beat yeah. when yeah. he came back Who's, a, who's <laughs> a hero? Who, who in the uh, peanut gallery is a hero that will run up to the kitchen at Van Dyke and grab the police beat off the cat food table next to the fridge in the pink notepad? That's how you know you've made it in comedy. We'll wait. It's in the kitchen. When you have a cat food notepad. table. Oh, yeah. Doug I mean, not a lot of comedians was have it, a cat it, food table. Doug became very belligerent about the cat food table at one point. He said, hey, fucking Louis C.K. has got a cat food table. <laughs> and he doesn't even have a cat. Yeah, he's got a cat. He oh, just yeah, does it to rub it into his friend's faces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said, Patton Oswalt's got a fucking tiger tank. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you, did you see the Louis C.K. email? Yes. All right. I think I did the right thing. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Clue the rest of us in? Yeah, no? no, he just sent me an email with a, a a bullshit, as I would send. Hey, sorry, I haven't responded to you in a thousand fucking emails, but I'm a dick. And I go, don't worry, uh, I just wondered, if I'm doing a special tomorrow, and this bit sounds uh, like something I think you do, which I thought was something Bill Hicks did that I... Have, it was, uh, I, and you clued him in on it. You said, I, I, it's not something I did. Worst news. I think it's something Bill Hicks did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to go, oh, Louis C.K. ripped off Doug Stanhope. But you fuck with the God. There's <laughs> legions of oh, fucking Jesus. Hicks of fans. <laughs> oh. And I something. said, it's, I'm sure you do it different. Do the fucking bit. Like, nothing bothers me more than people who get trashed for doing a premise that was like a Bill Hicks or a you know, Lenny Bruce. Yeah, like the government is bad. Yeah, yeah. no one has ever oh, done that before. Oh, he's trying to be like Hicks, but fucking dating <laughs> material you can do all day and night. Oh, aren't you know, fucking kids like little drunk people? Well, everyone does that bit, and no one says, hey, you're trying to be like a fucking hackneyed 80s comic. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to do something important. I've always said, steal my fucking bit. Jury duty. I probably said it on the podcast. Yes. That's an example of a bit. Always take jury duty. I just didn't make it funny enough. And it's an important thing. The easiest way to make a difference as one individual is one guy on a jury says, no, nah, I'm not fucking convicting him. I don't care how <laughs> many pounds of marijuana. You're only going to smoke yeah. enough to get high. It's not. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, steal my bits. And, yeah, so I told Louis C.K., fuck him, do it a bit. And because uh, I can't imagine Louis C.K. ever reminding me of Bill Hicks. I'm sure you have an angle right. on it. Who? Me? It was a bit of uh, anyway. The point <laughs> is, I hope he did the. I what? hope he did the bit. No, I, I think you. I think you buried the lead, and that is that he responded back to your email with the "Hey, how are you? How is Bingo? He did it. Everything is. How is everything? Oh, on a, and and oh, also, 
No, here's he, the reason he I actually did contacted that. you. He said, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm I'm a, a dick asshole." Oh, he actually. Yeah, yeah, no, he wrote oh. that. Like yeah. he he was. I thought when you told me that we were just laughing at him for it. Yeah, no, I was laughing at. You were laughing with him. Jo- yes, I was laughing with him. But then I sent a very encouraging email back, and he didn't say thank you or nothing. What a dick. <laughs> but I do that Still. to almost everybody. <laughs> a friend of mine just got – who I've known since the 90s. A guy, a good friend, I'm not going to uh-huh. mention his name, actually took a fucking bus to Worcester, Massachusetts the first time I played my hometown. Yes. And uh, he knows me. I never get back to people. I don't – I read my email. I read them drunk half the time. I forget you emailed because it's not marked unread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't. And then now, uh, yeah, he's going through a hard time. And he called me up, going, uh, "I I reached out to you a few times, and you didn't get back to me. You didn't contribute yeah. to his like, Kickstarter. That's what I do. I don't I know, get back but, to you. Again, but he's going through a hard time. I know, but people don't understand that. I'll send you. I'll say, hey, Doug. Uh, these people in fucking Abba land want to pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this for five minutes. And you don't get back to me for fucking two weeks. But, and it's like, it's not, it's not. And then you still have to remind me yeah, about Abba Jabaland. Abba Jabba Land yeah. is really uh, uh, ripe for Doug's yeah. style of comedy. If Doug doesn't get back to you, it's not because he doesn't like you. Well, sometimes, <laughs> like with an offer, I have to think about it that night. And then the next morning, because there's two different Doug Stanhopes. <laughs> like right now, I want to go, fuck it, Super Bowl party's back on. <laughs> the fucking middle palm trees are done in the yard and it's all painted and fuck it. And then in the morning, I would go, oh, shit, did I put that on a podcast? <laughs> so, yeah, you have to think about things through the hangover, through the high, through the 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 self-imposed manic depression of alcoholism, which I hate that word. Alcoholism. Yeah, but it it may it's it's it conveys the message. It shouldn't be ism. It should be ist. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> hey, I'm ch- an alcoholist. Ch- 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 <laughs> yeah, Chili, delete that bit. Make it sound like Doug thought of that. Hang on, let's. All right, let's go back. And you know what, Brett? I've always fucking said managers. it shouldn't be alcoholism. It should be alcoholist. Oh, that's <laughs> brilliant! Oh, Thank wow. you very much. It'll never work. Yeah, oh, that's great. I yeah. feel like I laughed what? better. Than yeah, whatever happened to Brad Erickson, that guy in the... Yeah, he was lost in the desert. Yeah, oh well. Like so many right. folks get. <laughs> Chad Shanks Desert. I, didn't... I, didn't... I wasn't it... anywhere near him. Is... Is, that... is that like Celine Dion's world? Like we're all living in Celine Dion's world? I have no idea what that means. Well, like it's like, uh, you know, it's Celine Dion's world. We just live in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't. So is this that's Chad, a reference for this, Brian's friends in Los Chad, Angeles. What do you think I know? Oh, Chad are... Shanks world. Yeah, is yeah. this Chad, Chad Shanks, Shanks desert. desert? We just live in it. After <laughs> every podcast, do you ever go home, Chad, and go? Actually, I'm a nice person, and all they talk about is me wanting does. to kill po- people. Pop, 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 you no. pop, pop, people. Pop. No, because I, I don't ever ten. feel like I'm a nice person. <laughs> and it's usually you that brings up killing the people. No, no, I uh, go to Is it? Well, it's... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we, 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 I don't want to talk we, about I mean, on Christmas, serious. you had your, your Christmas but, uh, 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 people uh, bashing stick. You were going to get seven of them at the uh, mall. Well, sometimes, yeah, that's, that's... sometimes I wonder if the only reason why Stano <laughs> has me around is because he's pretty sure that I'm going to break records and make news someday and he'll be like, I fucking had that guy yeah. on my podcast yeah. a bunch of times. <laughs> I knew him before he yeah. even killed yeah. people. <laughs> you bandwagon jumpers. Yep. Yeah. Well, no, when we get together, we talk comedy. Yeah. I don't fucking talk comedy clubs with Chad Shank. When Brian and I get together, we talk misanthropy, and then Chad and I take it to the next level. Killing people. Misery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's how you Listen, find there's something. There's a lot of people that just. As you're die. mixing your drink, you said that. That was fucking perfect, by the way. Forget- this is Chad. If you hear, if, when you're hearing that podcast and you hear the, uh, you hear the ice. Clinking in the drink as he says, misery. <laughs> Understand that Shaylee did not add that sound effect in. That was Chad mixing his drink. I love the sound. Natural ambiance. <laughs> By the way, it's, it's Shaylee, unless you're Lynn Shawcroft. Whatever. All right. It's Chad what? Shank's anniversary. Yes. How long has he been? On ever? New Year's Eve. He's been Tomorrow. with Jenny. Tomorrow will be my anniversary at midnight. Oh. Uh, yeah, midnight tonight. Uh, 16 years. 
holy monkeys. We asked him if he w- would come over for New Year's Eve. It's kind of a, oh, let me get this out of the way. I, I We said on the Christmas podcast that it's basically Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We're an open house. Ooh. And someone emailed me and said, hey, I don't know if you're doing the open house thing for New Year's as well, but my wife and I, that's where we're up to do. When I say open house, I mean for like my friends locally here. <laughs> yeah, no place to go for Christmas Eve. I'm not, it's not for the world. The town of misfit <laughs> toys can come over and have a Miller Light. Hey, come on, c- c- come to the Magic Kingdom. What the what fuck the was? F- what? You're not supposed to oh, touch no. that. I didn't oh, touch Jay it. Lee. You didn't touch it. What do you mean you did oh. it magically? Someone tech guy, can you work with Hennigan? Hang on a minute. Hey, I got me. Harley's go- Harley's what? gonna do Harley, tech. Harley's a grip. <laughs> I don't know if that's what a grip is. It's not is. a literal. Brett's from the middle. It just seems like it. It's all better now, you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Harley. Thank you, Harley. <laughs> Good job, Harley. Yeah. As I was saying to you, Brett. <laughs> Brett Erickson. Brett Erickson, 68 yeah. at, or at, at, at Twitter. At, at, org. Yeah, at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I talk to you mostly about comedy. I talk to Brian mostly about business and who's an asshole. And I, I talk to Chad Shank about how many people could you kill? Like if like that'd be a great Venn diagram, by the way. But keep going. <laughs> but we laugh. Yeah, we have yeah. fun. Yeah, we have fun. But uh, Harley is the guy that uh, I have nothing to say to, where I will literally call in Reverend Derek. <laughs> Because they're they're gearheads, and he'll tell me about all sorts of gear shit, and he bought a two-stroke this and that from the Craigslist, and I gloss over it, and I'll literally yell, Derek! Because <laughs> Derek's a gearhead, too, and Derek will rush in and just start like spewing nomenclature, not knowing what the conversation is. It's a funny running gag with Harley because yeah. like, he's a skateboardery guy. And he a doesn't care anyway. He's guy fucking one, always happy. As soon as he talks to me, I go, I don't have any fucking where to go with this. It's like hearing two fax machines communicate. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm glad it's happening. <laughs> but I, I'm not involved. Yeah. You're lucky you can call Derek. I, whenever people talk to me, I just have to look at my phone and ignore him. Like, I don't understand. Right, they only want you for one. Th- what, do, what do people call you for, Chad Shank? Just here is the only time I interact with people. People don't call me. No, it's like Brendan Walsh's Bluetooth serious? bit. He yeah. doesn't have an actual phone. I don't phone. have other social interactions. This is but it. this is like you saying you have a friend in Barcelona. <laughs> I don't have a friend in Barcelona. I said I, fr- I had a friend I, who I Barcelona, met in Barcelona, Kentucky. Barcelona. Is that a place? Sure. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they a good soccer team. Are you there. a headliner there? <laughs> no. Okay. No, I've middled there once. Okay. So you, you you have to talk to somebody, Chad. My wife. Chad Chang. And that's it. Well, I have a neighbor that comes by a lot, but it really, that guy's on the edge. I, I hope he <laughs> but it's listen. mostly to complain. Oh, really? I hope he doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> Fuck, I can only be nice for so long, but I like him. He's, he's all right guy, but he can't come over every day. How often does he come over? He tries to come over every day, but I... He tries to come over? Well, well have you got a fucking Maginot line? <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes I show up at the door acting like a lunatic, and then people... I didn't fucking answer texts for a reason! You're not supposed to come over! Uh, just Bingo and I will do that. Well, I shouldn't be giving this away, but oh, please do. Like if like, you try to find a bar before the gig that's not next to the oh, yeah. gig. Oh yeah, I'm familiar. F- far enough away where your your audience is not going to be in the bar. Yes. And, and if someone comes towards you anyway, we find I'll just go. Okay, just make it a heated discussion. Like no one, like if that, no one will break up an argument and go, "Hey, Doug Stano, if you just look like you yes. just like no, you bullshit, and yes. I gotta get paid, and like just whatever." So they go, "Oh shit, we shouldn't get involved in this." So now, in a we reverse boy church. cries wolf situation, someday you will be in an actual heated discussion with Bingo. And one of your yeah. fans will be like, "It's fine. This is they do this all the time to get rid of us. It's a bit he does. Like we can still go up and talk to him." The, the house across the street from me is for sale, and people come over there to look at it sometimes. Uh-huh. And my dog looks really scary, and she's not 
but she'll go nuts. I'll run outside and grab her around the neck like I'm trying to hold her back, and I'll tell her, we can't kill them until they come in the yard. We can't kill them unless they come that, in the yard. I, we've what talked about this on the when I, when I, Did we? Yes. Uh, when I, yeah. It's worth repeating. <laughs> when, I, when I worked for McCallum Malt Whiskey, I bought, I, sorry, I didn't buy, I rented this fucking, uh, this gorgeous, uh, like half of a farmhouse that was in the middle of fucking nowhere in the north of Scotland. And uh, I was the only person that lived there. And I had these, I had this fantastic hi-fi at the time. No, no relationship. But uh, I had a fantastic hi-fi. And I used to crank it all the time. And I loved it. And then they, they kept trying to rent out the farmhouse. Like, it's like, like, it's like 10 yards away from me. And the only reason to live in the middle of fucking nowhere is that you can do what the fuck you want. So they're trying to rent out the only property that can... You know, like, tell me to turn it down. <laughs> the, and, and, and the problem they had, though, was that I, there was a turn off from the main road. It's like a mile long. So I could see when they were bringing people up to, like, show them the property. And, and you so, made it appear haunted? Soon, I know. As soon as they, they, they took the left turn to come on, to come and visit, I just turned up the music really loud so that they, they couldn't even <laughs> visit their property without be, and be able to talk. Because they, you know, and uh, it worked. But yeah, you don't want to live in the middle of nowhere and have neighbors. We have a lot of common, Mr. Hennigan. Yeah. I was just thinking we should just make this the New Year's marathon podcast where just everybody sits in. Harley gets in, starts talking gears. If Reverend Derek were here, you're just going to try to walk just, people from well, the no, podcast. No, just, no, just everyone. Like, we'll just, go. We'll go Shaley, watch the numbers go down. Unsubscribe. Yeah. Unsubscribe. Till everyone's a 17 gone. 17 hour podcast. But we don't have to be. It's just uh, you come in, you come out. Yeah. I, I, and I'll I, contribute that much money to childhood cancer. Yes. Every Make dollar you pay for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I noticed uh, Chaley put a. Chaley did the whole website. I haven't looked at it all. Uh, and I have to write a fucking update. I'm sorry. Mm. One day I will get around to writing the update <laughs> after the playoffs, first round of the playoffs. Uh, but uh, yeah, he has a he has a donate uh, here uh, button for the podcast. I haven't checked PayPal to see if anyone noticed. I think we just <laughs> we, I want to put back up the be my best friend. Ah, uh, that went that went sour. How? <laughs> well, it's a long story. Okay, well, let's As someone who took it too seriously. Oh, really? Yes. So Who's let's on, let's uh, put in context. Wait. You used to have a feature on your website that said be my best friend. If if, if you just bid. To yeah, be my best friend. The, the highest bidder was my new best friend. That's right. But if you got, it was a, this was before e, well, eBay was probably around. I wasn't aware. It wasn't. Of it. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, I, and I go, but if someone pays me more, I'm going to dump you. And then I'll, that new person. And this kid just kept sending me his money. And like, I think it's a joke. And then he was serious. And that was the only, the, the one thing that when I met Marilyn Manson, we had in common because this kid has been following Marilyn oh. Manson. He used to tell me, oh, he Gidget Gain or something was a guy that played in the Marilyn Manson's band back in when I was doing this. This is like 2002 or three or something. Oh, when right. I, black, and, black and white time. Well, the, when I did the best friend thing on my website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kept talking about... And you go, oh, he's just haunting this fucking guy the same way he's haunting me. But no, he's really interested in your comedy and he wants to do an art show. And I'm like, then why doesn't he contact me? Is it, it was a weird thing, but he still is in touch with me. <laughs> you know, 12 years later. I'm and too, Marilyn Manson. And Marilyn Manson. Yeah, we goof on him. Adam is, I won't say So he's kind name. of still your best friend. Yeah, well, it all paid off. It's on paper. Was that actually why you ditched the whole thing because of him? Well, at, it's one, at one point when he started telling me his problems, and oh. like he was, I'm like, I, that was a joke. It's, it's I, just a I bit. thought that was kind of obviously <laughs> a, a joke. Uh, yeah, but yeah, he, he still emails me telling me his problems are over, and then telling me more problems. <laughs> Not so bad. You're you're a good dude, Adam. Adam yeah. yeah, don't kill anyone. <laughs> you would have by now. All right. Like, <laughs> we'll send Chad Shank up at you. <laughs> Chad Shank is a nice person. I know he he's is. A fluffy marshmallow. I know, but I feel he's nice to us. I think so. <laughs> yeah. He put us to bed the other night. <laughs> that night. Not me. Uh, yeah. No, Bingo and I were passing out on the couches, and 
states of disrepair. So he just picked Bingo up like a child and brought her in and put her into bed and then took a couple looks at me and went, yeah. all right, there you go. I, I, I didn't remember it until you told me, but I think what it was is we wanted the couch because we weren't done drinking, but Bingo didn't want to give it up. So I carried her to bed, and then after we had our drinks, then you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, did that, she did that the other night. <laughs> she, she, last night, yeah, she did that. She, she's, it's an L-shaped couch, and the fucking dogs will clog it up, and the cats will clog it up, and she... So we have we each have our side. She has the short part of the L because she's shorter. And I have the long part, and the dogs will sleep up on top of the cushions. Well, she fucking curls up around the whole L. Then the dogs, I can't even fucking sit down. Bingo, honey, do you want to go to bed? <laughs> hint, hint at some point. Your couch is like a microcosm for your whole place. Like there's such a collection of malcontents and retards that there's no room for you anymore. They're just slowly pushing you off. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I can't even sit down anymore. I'm only visiting. <laughs> Lots of folks are visiting, and we're. I'm. I'm fucking ditching out of this right now because we have uh, some steaks for four of us <laughs> that we're supposed to cook before fucking uh, interlopers came. So we didn't eat filet mignon while you're eating cheese and crackers. But hey, enjoy the cheese and crackers. We're gonna go eat. <laughs> Fucking 50% off clearance filet mignon, my favorite section of Safeway. Hey, this segment has been sponsored by the clearance section of Safeway, both the deli and the meat section. If you're eating at football at my house or on the holidays, it was 50% off and it would be rotten tomorrow. Enjoy yesterday's bacon today. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, now it's only, uh, it's only 10 to 8. We just, uh, (laughs) is it really only? Oh my God! Yeah, it's ten, ten to eight. We ate some food, so I eight. think we should be good till midnight. But right now, there's only a small gathering of people in the fun house. But right now, everyone is singing to my iPod. My iPod is the worst, <laughs> and I can't correct it. Like I'm trying to fix it. I deleted all of the songs on my iPod trying to fucking download the Bill Burr podcast. Chaley got them back, but I can't get like. I, it's fucked. Everyone is <laughs> singing If I Had a Million Dollars by Bare Naked oh, no. Ladies, which I would try to hide. If I, I had a million dollars, I would stop them from doing that. I like that song, <laughs> but I would have that on a hidden playlist. But everyone is in there. Hi, we handed out pot cookies. We, we, I, I got the half off filet mignon for the four meat eaters that I knew were going to be here. Everyone else is getting beans and weenies <laughs> without even without the potatoes. weenies. It's just, it's, so that's what's going on right now is Chad Shank. I got to talk to him about this on the air about his fucking his Bluetooth story. And yeah. uh, right now at 10 to 8 on New Year's Eve, people are singing bare naked ladies. If I had a million dollars and Chad Shank knows every word and is doing the baritone. It is truly a magical situation. So we will check in as uh, we will slowly watch the night degrade. You will not miss <laughs> any of it except for the parts Chaley edits out. But just to give you a full New Year's Eve experience. And we'll be back after these messages. <laughs> James, have you ever used Eros Guide for hookers on the road? Eros Guide, that sounds interesting. What is it? Eros Guide is where, uh, in my later stage of getting hookers via computer, I would go to Eros Guide. They have uh, hookers in every major metropolitan area. So, is this like uh, It tells you what they gives you pictures, tells you what they're into. Right, because I'm tired of going to Craigslist, finding these skanky hookers. Is there a better place Hey, your face isn't really pixelated. Get out of my Motel 6. (laughs) How much to just talk for three months? (laughs) All right, I'll give you 250 bucks an hour, but I get to live on your couch for a year and a half. And believe me, you'll be paying me that back. <laughs> oh. Did you say no? I like what you did. I respect that. <laughs> Can I do some laundry at your house? <laughs> it's, just, it's just this jacket and cap. <laughs> All right, that's a plug from James Inman. Now back to the podcast. Already sort of in progress. Ah! Rulers 
of the Underpants Universe. Sex! Ah! Keep your balls off your legs and such. Sex underwear. Don't have sweaty balls. Was that good? I don't know. <laughs> Oh no, they have like five hits. Five and a half. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't either, until I, well, I, sit and talk into the mic. Don't touch it. There's uh, a broke into the old apartment. I don't know that. Uh, there's uh, the one about jumping through the sprinkler. It's not on. It is on. What makes you think? It's don't on? touch it. It's not on. It's Joby, on. Joby, go right there. It flashes when it's oh, pausing. Yeah. It's red when it's on. I, we do this without you. Sir, okay, 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 audience, it's on. Uh oh, Monday right. night Hennigan is gonna go turn it's... sour quick. No, I won't. Like, unless you're a douche. You you haven't eaten, have you? I had two bits of chicken. Oh, okay, yeah, you just ate, and yeah. now now a coffee with a little whiskey. Yeah, and then uh, we'll yeah. power through. That's right. That is right. Mm. I don't know who's coming over. Does it matter? The, no, those, it doesn't. those are the dog's bollocks of gloves. Look All at right. that. It's no one cares about yeah. gloves. You said okay. you wanted a podcast. Yeah. I just want to smoke in their house while they're away. Yeah. Oh, ah. So, Joby. Yes. You're a well known figure in the Doug Stanhope. I'm you not. And the unit. Well, what you run well, the, he runs the death, death pool. pool. Yeah. They know that. Yeah. yeah. So, what else? I mean. When I the first who, met the ones who are irritated by the death pool, that don't even think it's funny, and yeah. they'll turn off. No, they don't know Joby. They yeah. just blame me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so the people who are into death pool, Joby, what is your life plan right now? Uh, short term? No, yeah. Well, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no life plan is short term. Listen, I I got a crap job that everyone, you know, most people would love to have because it's a career. All right, it's a a great job. Uh, yeah. For the for my listeners, meaning most people would love to have if they can't find work. Right. right. Okay. So it's, it's, you work for a water company. Yeah, I do development for a water company, and you know it's, it's uh, yeah, it's a great career for anyone that wants a white picket fence life. Okay, but you say that as if you don't want that. No, I don't want that. So how long have you been doing it? Since he fucked himself over. Uh, approximately uh, seven years. Right. Joby used to be the guy. I met Joby on MySpace. When I know. I first moved in. Well, I'm. You know, this isn't a conversation that goes to other people I know. too, Brian. It's not just. The I know, three but of I'm, us. I'm giving it the. Yeah. yeah. So I met him. He was. You remember? He was just free to be you and me. He was going to start a diving company in Belize. Yeah. Went mm -hmm. down there. He diving. was slightly annoying. I remember the first time I came down, yeah. I was like, "This guy's going to do all this fucking shit. This is really he annoying." Had no care in the world. Yeah. yeah. You, you hate mm -hmm. those people. Yep. Yeah. Of course you do. And, He's fucking single. And now he doesn't hate me anymore because I, I'm a loser. And I... but the point was like it wasn't like. You got children or something, or somebody got you like you somebody tricked you into getting them. He pregnant. was living oh. kind of dirt cheap. He had to live with his uh, cousin, yeah, and uh, in Hereford, but they worked it out. Yeah, so at when... some point he decided to buy a house. I don't know what came first: the truck, the house, or the job. It was uh, the 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 job, the truck, the house. The job. Okay, so. so Okay. Joby worked around here. He did a little this and that. He yeah. worked for no, the I, stock I exchange. The stock, That's uh, right. You managed the stock uh, exchange. Metamorphosis. Uh, which is a bar. Oh, yeah. You worked. Metamorphosis uh, managed that place. The metal artwork gallery. Yeah. Jason, the guy who made the yes. palm tree parts. Yeah. So, it was, you know, just kind of little stuff here and there. So, and, what, what, and... what was the flip? The, the well, switch he that saw, flipped? Well, I get, this is job pays well. It's a real job. Maybe then I could do something like... Like go diving in Belize. I'll just do this for a little while. And that's what everyone does, and they get sucked into that cycle. But he had that, so he got the truck. Way too, you know, lofty. Uh... The Tacoma. And then he goes, I Tundra. Can... Tundra, sorry. Then I could buy a house. And right. now I'm fucking stuck. I remember your housewarming party. It was me, you, and Bingo. Yep. <laughs> and it was the saddest because you hated oh, the no. fact that, that you got house. sucked into this. Yeah. Because it's in like a housing community. If it's you've ever been to, to Vegas, 
or cookie Phoenix. cutter like suburbia fucking house. So why those? You... That's why Robert Downey Jr. got into trouble because he lived in a fucking neighborhood where every house looked the same, and he just walked in it. So how do we? House. How do we get you out of the? How do you get you out um, of? He's way. working on it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm uh, like you said the other day. They're gonna force my hand. Who's they? Uh, is companies downsizing? Oh, well, good. Uh, yeah, development is done. There, there will be no need for me oh. within the next six months. Good so. news is he lives right off the base, mm-hmm. and that's where every military family wants to live. By other military, I'm just going to rent my place out and walk, like furnished, right? Like walk away. He can live in the rape trailer yeah. as long as he doesn't f- fuck a hippie in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no promises. That's a callback to God knows how many podcasts this will be cut mm-hmm. up into, but it's a callback to one of them. Yeah. So. Oh, well, that's uh, good. Yeah, force my hand. Uh, let him lay me off. Uh, Did you ever see Joby's mom's trailer? No. Doug Stanhope? No. Oh, beautiful. Joby's mom, was, unless, I'm mis- unless I'm misrepresenting, was a real fucking hippie. Yeah, she was. And she has a trailer that's still there in her backyard that's basically like a Mork and Mindy egg with wheels on it. All right, it's a wing turret off of a B <laughs> something bomber. Oh, right? yes, it's I a heard about fucking this. Egg. Yeah, it's a B, not to a B-37 bomber or something She like that. lived so in this. Yeah, she traveled up the coast. A B-210. No, that's yeah. a Datsun. Sorry. Right, right. Hey, anyone over 50 will get that <laughs> reference. But, yeah, traveled right. up and down the coast. And and, and and unless I'm mistaken from what I remember, because um, I once met your mother, she's kind of turned the corner. She's kind of a little bit Christian or something. Well, she, we were raised Jehovah's Witness. Oh. Uh, I, just, the... just so you know, I've never said the Pledge of Allegiance once in my life. Wow. Ever. Is that a thing with Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah. I didn't know that. The f- fucking false prophet? Yeah. Or pledging false. allegiance to anything I other than God? I didn't, I didn't know Jehovah? that was a thing. Other than God. Well, you're going to need to learn religion. Yep. And the Pledge of Allegiance, all in the same night. Uh, yeah. And you're going to do Americans it in... can say that? They, they've never said the Pledge of Allegiance. And only Jehovah's Witnesses can say that. They can, like, go... No, they don't say it. That's what I mean. They can say that I've never said it. Do you know the Pledge of Allegiance? Of course not. Because I want to hear you say it, because you're starting to sound like Arthur. Who's (laughs) Arthur? (laughs) Dudley Moore. All right. (laughs) No, I've never said it. I don't know. I have to say it at some point, because I've I've put my application in. For citizenship? Ah, yes, but only because now you can get joint citizenship. Really? Yeah. It's pretty easy now. Oh, you don't have to denounce Scotland? No. You so, used to have to do that? Yeah, you used to have He's to. He's still got to marry in. Well, I'm married. He's I'm married. done. Yeah. I'm done on that side. The point is, citizenship's the next step. Yeah. And it used to be the case that you had to renounce Satan. Oh, <laughs> wow. And, that's no. weird. Yeah. And now it's, it's not. So fucking creepy. And now it's not. Now, <gasps> now apparently I could... The good thing is that in the, for, I imagine it works. I'm just guessing here because in the UK, at no point do you actually have to say, I'm willing to fight and die for this country. That's why there's so many people fighting in line for ISIS, I imagine, with British accents. Who's going to fight and die for Scotland, though? The Scottish mean, people would. Uh, Braveheart? They, yeah, uh, You've seen the film, have you? Yeah, but they, they don't st- go to war with anyone. No, no, we, oh, no, they still do. They still no. have face paint at my shows when yeah, I play yeah, Edinburgh yeah. and Glasgow. We, we, we need oh, to. yeah. I've got we we don't need to, but let's not get into the whole Scottish right. independence thing. Okay. Because that's <laughs> dead and dusted. We've won. Okay? So, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the main thing is I... I, uh, you know, having American citizenship is rem- is remarkably useful, and also I'm paying taxes without representation right now. So, hmm. all right, I don't know what that means, but you yeah. made us come over and podcast, and we are what? only at the eight uh, oh seven mark. Yeah, but we're not going back to Joby. I don't know what to say. Wait, you wanted to come over here to talk, and then Joby showed up. And now, yeah. You- all right, we well, got we this ha, we're gonna be doing this till midnight. So let's just cut this short. Right, let's cut this short. And uh, didn't Big go, go to the bathroom? She's right there. Oh right, okay. She's in the room. Holy <laughs> <laughs> <Early> uh, monkeys! <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, that's that's that's. Now what do we do? We uh, just hit that once. Oh. And we'll flat. No, and then you stopped it. And then see, you, see, you fucked it. No. Yeah. See? Oh, you, why are you looking at me when you said I fucked it? I didn't do anything. I'm not I'm touching saying, anything. I'm just saying, Mr. Technical of Sierra Vista. All right. Now, it, fuck, it's, it's supposed see, to no, flash. See, see, God like, damn it. See? Nope. See? Shit. 
happy. You've all been betrayed. It probably wasn't recording the whole time. No, it's re- it's recording. It's recording again. I can't stop it from recording. All right. Never liked, all right. I never liked you people anyway. You people. Should I get Erickson? All right. No, no. Now we're solid. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, no. Well, fucking Hennigan was so hammered at the last break, which was an hour and ten minutes ago. Like, no, we should keep podcasting. And then he came over. He had nothing to say and just started grilling Joby about his personal life. Well, you used to. Why? Where? What's your long term plan? And you can see his eyes turning black. You know how Bingo, when she gets shit faced, her <laughs> eyes are just all black Maybe he and kind of crossing. He just wanted to Chaley to have to listen to all that shit. But no, Joby's friends just showed up. As I'm leaving, you saw them. I don't know if you yeah, saw yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah, they hauled over to the gate. Uh, Joby was there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, no, I wanted. I, uh, fuck, God damn it! I had two things I wanted to talk to you about. I don't want to. I don't remember either. The Bluetooth. The Bluetooth story oh, is fucking Bluetooth. fantastic. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, you got it. Got it. Got it. Got oh it. yeah. I, Bingo's uh, Bingo came back from Mexico. Unlike any other human being, she came back with constipation. Well, that's she's like, I haven't. She, I got to get an enema or some laxatives or something. Like, did, did you not drink the water? Like, <laughs> I only drink, ate the cheese. <laughs> I I was so afraid of drinking the water in Mexico that I had no liquids of. Any kind, all I ate was cheese. I drank cheese, nacho cheese for breakfast. Now I spent three days in Rocky Point, and uh, I'm just solid cement shit from gut to anus. <laughs> My entire <laughs> internal tract. It's true. <laughs> she's yellow. She's, 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 can, can I get a, a whiskey and Drano, please? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Call Roto Rooter. That's, That's the name. name. And something, something. And away down goes the... troubles down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> every, I feel really bad because every time I come over here, I know it's my house, but Carrie Mitchell has, God love her soul, 10 months quit smoking. And this it's a small, small place. And Sorry. one cigarette will stink it up for a while. But I keep smoking. Especially when I don't have to look at her here. <laughs> hey, Carrie, can you mind the party while we go do another installment of the podcast? <laughs> All right, let's start with if anyone out there can tell me the name of the documentary, there's three that I saw that are very similar in vain the Daniel and Devil John, uh, the, the Devil and Daniel Johnston. Then there's D railroaded Larry Wildman Fisher. And there's a third one about another musician, I think an Austin musician that's fucked out of his head. And the only way he could sleep was to have, he had all these old, like, you know, uh, turn dial television sets with rabbit ear. <laughs> you, it would, and the radios, just white just noise, yeah. just yeah. static as loud as possible, and it's the only way he could sleep because that's what he hears in his head. I, I, and you had a fucking story I, with a Bluetooth. Well, I relate to that because that's how I deal. Sometimes if I have voices, I'll put a Bluetooth headset set as a speaker, hook up my phone, and listen to this police scanner. That way it's random in bursts, the same way it usually is, so that I don't get alarmed. Because what will happen is I get alarmed by him because you. Oh, Who's here? And then you, and then part of you becomes aware that there's not anybody there, and you feel like a fucking dickweed, but you still hear him, which is kind of more scary than I, when you think there might be somebody there. I remember when we first, because you've been really open about your head being fucked up. We make light yeah. of it, and yeah. the whole that's kill, how I deal with it. <laughs> serial killer thing yeah. that we make jokes about. But I remember when you were talking just openly about. You know, hearing voices and just being logical. It was kind of like the first time I took acid. They explained it well enough to me that these are things you're going to have to deal with that are going to happen. Just don't panic. And I'm like, thank God someone sat me down. But you 
have the same thing where you go, okay, I know this is not a real voice I'm hearing. Yeah, but it's all the time. And a lot of times it's like a radio in the next room where it's not, you know, not it's not demons telling you to fucking do stuff. It's just like a... And, and then you start to rationalize it logical. There's voices all over the, you know, right now. If you tune in a radio, you can hear them. So is there something in my head that can just tune in? Is there a logical explanation? Exactly. Other than I'm a fucking Looney Tune. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you can turn on the TV and you're hearing yeah, voices. Yeah, does that make sense? Why, why is it weird that my yeah. brain might... Bingo, I, I do a whole bit about mental illness that's all from hearsay perspective. Where like it's like me being a, a militant black patriot as a white guy, and I'm sure there's a million references of people who are like that that are white fucking Hollywood people. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I know from her. I, I, You've seen it up close. Yeah, when I say the reference, and when the short wave radio is playing in your head, that's because she described it that way. I've yeah. never heard that, but that's, what, no, yeah, that, that's, that's cool. It, it's not the joke. It's on the way to the joke. It's about how they deal with mental illness here in Bisbee. Anyway, the point is, you told me <laughs> that you fucking sleep with, with your b Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'll put audiobook and then set a timer. For however long I think it'll take me to go to sleep. And then I have stuff going, pumping into the head. So that way I'm not focusing on. Which is probably not going to do a lot of good if somebody breaks into my house. So, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's somebody here. I'm listening to. It's a, it's one of those uh, fucked up things that's been become such as a staple. Like with pleading insanity. Well, like you talking right now about your mental illness, they'd go, he's not insane. Listen to him. He talks like a normal person. Well, just because you're not just trying to suck your own dick in a gutter and hurling feces at people doesn't mean you don't have some kind of mental illness. And you are, that was so impressive to me when you were like, like you were aware of your mental illness. A couple of the, the, therapists that I've talked to have actually told me that that's why like medication I'm not on medication I haven't been for, and I've tried but it doesn't really do that they said it's probably not going to work for you I'm too analytical of my own mind and I'm aware of things that most people with this problem are not aware of so they're like you fucked yourself you're like in the worst situation I've ever seen anybody be in because usually at least people are oblivious enough to just fucking stumble through it's a, a weird thing in AA, in the big book of AA, they say there's people that are too smart for this program. They say that outright. Yeah, I've had. It's, it's almost like if Christianity, any religion said, okay, if you're too smart, you can't have faith. But for the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, I've had two different therapists tell me that I should write a self-help book. Because they're like, you understand the concepts of what needs to be done to you know be better you're it's just impossible for you to do it but you understand the concept yeah, but so. you can't teach people to be smart <laughs> or, or 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 smarter well no they want me to teach people the things that they want to teach cognitive behavior therapy and stuff where it you know it if but you, you have to have your same level of, of cognition. No, too. no, no. That's what fucks me out of it being able to work for me is because I'll overanalyze it to the point of, well, wait a minute, that's bullshit. If that is, you know. No, but I'm saying you could not teach someone who. No, I, I, got I don't have saying. an example of a person. I want to say Kenny, who's not even crazy just to pick on him. But, but they want, because my, my words to them was, you know how I live. Why would you suggest that I write a self-help book? And they were like, you don't. Nobody has to know how you live. Just tell them what they should do. You understand what people should do. Yeah. But I can't implement those things because there's not the consistency of mind. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. Well, have them listen to the podcast. Hey, listen to the podcast. I haven't been to a therapist in a long time. But I was yeah. just telling Beagle, you have to find somebody that you trust, who you think can understand you to help you that may know a little bit more than you. I've been to therapists before and all I could focus on was the lady was so fat that the <laughs> fat from her legs 
folded over and hid her ankles like fucking jeans with a cuff. <laughs> Gilbert Grape, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, and I just remember thinking, your fucking insanity is visible. I mind, <laughs> I'm hiding mine better than you, and you're trying to help me. You've got more problems than me. But so... Right. Yeah, my 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 brother's ex wife is a therapist and won't get on a plane. She would never come out here with the kids because she's terrified of flying. And I know that you can't find a perfect person, yeah. but you have yeah. to, somebody you have exactly. to trust. Well, the only advice that I repeat: what advice would you give comics? Joey Scazzola, I was a big open micer, and some young open micer was asking me advice, and I was pontificating. And he pulled me aside. He goes, never give someone advice because all you're doing is telling them how to be just like you. And so, yeah, you should write a fucking self-help book or do a self-help podcast, which is way easier than writing because there is someone like you. That's the only time that I ever felt like I was com communicating or doing any good is when you play some back-ass fucking Nebraska, Kansas Iowa, 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 Illinois. Sorry, Kansas. I didn't mean to go to Nebraska. <laughs> Illinois is the worst fucking state in the world. Iowa's second. But you find that one kid who's never been exposed. He thinks what you're thinking, but he's surrounded by bullshit. And he, like, oh, fuck, someone else thinks this. And they're not just saying it. They're making a living saying it. And that's the only time you have any, like... Oh fuck! I should write more shit. I shouldn't retire. Yeah. So yeah, you should put that out there. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would say. Wear a Bluetooth when you hear voices and listen to <laughs> Chicago is a great uh, police scanner to listen to because it's very uh, busy and sporadic. Thank God! I thought you meant the band. <laughs> Does anybody know what <laughs> time it really is? Really Does anyone really care? Another callback. When I when I go to the spree, maybe I'll put something like that in. That way, I'm just annoyed. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's way more. Uh, no, it's way more common for someone to come up to me going, "Oh, you're an atheist." I never thought that anyone. But what you have, again, I I do the bits I do are all through Bingo's eyes, and people I know but yet it's way weirder for someone to say hey fuck i have to sleep with a bluetooth in so i know that the voice is not <laughs> is a real voice you should trick yourself yeah yeah, yeah. I, you've explained this to me and i think it's fucking fascinating <laughs> and i feel like a fraud i feel like some fucking <sighs> not gay person go yeah. i feel like jamie kilstein and rape culture. Like, all right, let the rapists talk for themselves, douche. Stop leeching on. But I live with you, so I have to deal with it. I appreciate it, too, because, like, I, for a long time, I didn't want anybody to know, you know, it's not some of your problems. There's a stigma that goes with it. I was trying to hold real, you know, regular jobs and stuff, and, you you know, until everything fell the fuck apart every time. But um then I hang out with you guys and where nobody really judges you for being a fucking it's lunatic. Fucking so it's judge like, you. Yeah. We celebrate yeah, right, you. Yeah. I, have a, I have a fucking place. I have a personality finally. And, and forgive me, the Canadians I'm about to talk about. <laughs> Some Canadians. You I know, met them. Yeah, met. they were nice people. Uh, I, was, I, I had to go away to do that bar rescue show. And uh, while I was away... Some fan stopped by, which occasionally happens, and uh, I wasn't here. And Jaylee said, well, come on in, stay stay the weekend. You can sleep in the rape trailer. <laughs> so I came back, and they're there, but they they were, I won't say dullards, but that's what I mean. They, But they weren't, we probably talked about this last week because we were drunk. It was yeah, right after maybe. they left. But they weren't fanboyish. They weren't, they didn't really even talk to me. Uh, what the fuck was my point at the she beginning of this? Bit... Maybe they just figured it was a free place to stay. She. Was she a little bit messed? No, be, what, 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 I was I using the, them as an example. 
I don't know. We, we, uh, we digress. Yeah, I fucking digress. Sorry, Canadians. You're fine people. But when someone shows up and stays the weekend at your house, you're, you're expecting them to be wicked annoying or asking you a lot of questions. And you just, you acted like I was interrupting your uh, quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you come to my fucking house, be a little bit annoying. <laughs> I think it has something to do with Jamie Kilstein. I don't know. I don't even know who that is. He threw me. Anyway. It, I'm a shut in, remember? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I <laughs> Your references point. are lost on me, sir. Ch yeah. Chaley will uh, fill in and uh, just finish my point for me in a bad. Does <laughs> anybody really know what time it is? My first concert? My first music concert? I. I there's uh losing my virginity i have two different times once when i actually made penetration with a girl before we really know why we're doing this but we knew this is what adults do and then the first time i came which was years later and this is my first time uh, uh seeing a concert with my mother <laughs> and then on my own <laughs> Like, all right. It was one time. The first time was all Chicago, right. <laughs> but it was with my mother. And she was bitching as she's smoking cool menthols because you could smoke in a theater then. She was bitching about people smoking pot in front of us. And then I saw Jethro Tull on my own. I'm like, oh, it's a whole different experience. But before that, my first concert I brought my mother to when I think I was like 16 before Chicago, which I don't count because it was comedy, was Bill Cosby, and he did not rape my mother. So, you know what? You cast all the accusations you want out there. Bill Cosby did not rape my mother because she had to take me back to Leicester where she was staying as a divorcee. All right, that doesn't go anywhere, does it? But it's a true story, man. It's a goddamn true story. What else were we going to talk about? I forgot. Fucking you. That's boring. I think it's fucking amazing. I don't know. I don't know what so else. It's, it's like being you gotta a... You got to ask a question, then. I don't uh, know how to talk It's a about. functional alcoholic, is uh, uh, how they describe it. Yeah, except for imagine the repercussions of being an alcoholic. I'm a functional psychopath. Where at any moment I could, if it's the wrong day or the wrong circumstances, I could literally cause other people harm. You know that's fucking scary. That's why it's fascinating. Yeah, that's 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 well, that's why I don't go places. That's why I stay. Yes. You know. And most people would see him as a complete teddy bear. Well, earlier in the podcast, when I said. And it really happened. And Reverend Derek was so funny because he pretends to be retarded at times. And then he's really funny. And then sometimes he pretends to be way smarter because he thinks you're drunk enough to buy it. There's a lot of levels to Reverend Derek. That's for sure. Uh, he's smart. But when I was talking about Harley, the stalker, my stalker neighbor's boyfriend, he'll come up and just start talking to me about gearhead stuff. And I've, and one time I did actually yell, out, Derek, he's doing that thing again. And Derek walked in, no idea of the conversation, and just starts, just so blurts good. out all the vernacular of fucking two stroke engine thing and carburetor. And it was, a... <clears throat> but you just had that moment where you're fucking, I can tell you're sketched out and you're leaning forward. And you're like, oh, in there. In... And. I said, hey, Bingo, will you guys go get us a couple shots of Jägermeister? Because you and Bingo can talk gearhead no. of your actual head. But to, I even told Bingo, that's awesome that you cued in on that. Because only in, high si in, excuse me, only in hindsight do I realize that I looked like a fucking psychopath in there. I thought I was just fucking being quiet. You didn't look like a psychopath to anyone now else. I know that, right. I only was other fucking... person that noticed was Carrie Mitchell, who we all live a life of fucking dangling on the edge of human psyche. There's none of us that are, like, there's comics that will go out and they phone in a set up at the fucking laugh stop in Tucson because they've been doing it for 40 years and it's been the same act. 
and they golf with the owner and that's why they get booked. They never think about anything. They I oh, just do this and everyone claps and I you know I book cruise ships and corporate <laughs> gigs and they say the same dumb shit and everyone claps. Like almost to the level that Brian Hennigan was talking about <laughs> Tonga. Tonga comedy. <laughs> it's almost that bad, but there's a market for that and those are people who think they won free tickets. So there's those <laughs> <laughs> and they show up and they crowd the club and pay too much for their drinks. So yeah, no one, most of our close social circle are fucked. So yeah, you, you notice and you work with it. It's not like you have to deal with it. It's that's the nor normality of my entire life has been people on some level of depression, fuck murder, suicide, shut in yeah. hoarder whatever so it's the norm it is the norm yeah. and that, for a lot of us and I that's guess. why only carrie mitchell is like fucking good eye <laughs> and she, 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 she well, didn't she I, didn't she didn't well, she didn't say what the fuck's it. wrong with him she's like good eye uh, she knows i appreciate it i appreciate the cue because i i need him and you know that was good i thought i and i probably would have i would have sat there and fucking seethed like a fucking lunatic for a while until i got it but we can talk each control. other down. But well, we, we didn't even have, have to really. No, talk. we didn't have I to. Mean, yeah, just, just get the fuck out of the situation. Bingo sat there while I fucking paced back and forth, <laughs> fucking like a weirdo for a little bit, and then and then we were able to talk after a bit. But it's nice, you know. I appreciate it. I, I wouldn't be able. I wouldn't talk about this in private with anybody but my wife before. You know. Well, we this, are in but... private, and no one knows who the fuck you are. Well, and I don't even <laughs> give a fuck now. I, I, or me. Like, right. my fans don't know who I am. I'm yeah. a guy that doesn't have as good a voice as you. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the guy who talks like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's... Uh, you, you get emails where people try to... What? what Hang on. Chaley will edit out the dead air. Oh, J.D. Salinger. It's a catcher in the rye. Right. And I, I watched a Netflix document. I'm not sponsored by Netflix, by the way. It's the only one I can figure out how to use. So when I go on a Netflix binge, you fucking cunts that email me, what are you, like a corporate shill? No, it's the one I know how to use. That's I can't figure out my iPod has fucked me over. Uh, I, oh, use Spotify. I don't know how to use Spotify. I know how to turn on this podcast if it's already set up. You hit that one button till it stops flashing. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, oh, you corporate chill. Well, Netflix is like a TV channel now. That's a medium to watch shit on. It's, but yeah. it's the old, there's a million other there's Hulu's and all the I I they figured out they one. don't have the same shit. I don't so. care. The point is I one is enough. I don't want to learn new shit. So when I do hashtag Netflix, it's because uh, that's what I watched it on. And that's where you can find it. I'm trying to be helpful. I've, I appreciate J.D. It. Salinger. He fucking disappeared after he wrote, basically after he wrote Catcher in the Rye. And uh, again, I forget my point. God damn it. He just went into hiding. He just didn't want to, any part of it. Well, the the judgment maybe of you know uh no i had a point oh, uh, i went on a i don't know what your tangent. fucking point was sorry I was, I was reaching something you said made me think of that all right i don't remember what it was well, now inter interview me i don't <laughs> I don't care enough about other people to know how to ask questions. I used to pretend I read how to win friends and influence people, and I used to use that. But I oh quit. no, I'm listening. I'm checking my text message. No. I just got two. No, you go ahead. I'm just checking my. I was, I'm That's not, what you. No, did. I think I said. Yeah, right. I already told you about that, Jay. Hey, Becker, 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 Becky Becker, and Matt Becker just texted a happy New Year to everybody, all the listeners out there right now. Becky Becker and Matt Becker up in Anchorage, Alaska, would like to play this little number for you. Should for a happy new year. old acquaintance be forgotten. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. 
you <laughs> fucking psycho. I didn't know you had a song. Sorry, Jesus. I lost you. I didn't know you were really crazy. Uh, no, no, I didn't have a song. <laughs> I was I, I was thinking about segueing into a break. Oh yeah. In fact, I will segue into a break. Chaley will edit it. Great news, kids. The much-neglected merch page on my much-neglected website has been taken over by Greg Chaley. So we have uh, tour t-shirts, podcast t-shirts. We have Pop-Off Vodka Presents t-shirts. Get them before we get sued, before we get the cease and desist. And a whole shitload of uh, CDs and DVDs that span a lifetime. A sad, tragic, bloated lifetime of my fucking horrible thoughts and pontifications. Uh, So help me get that shit out of my crawl space. Thanks for that. And now, back to the podcast previously recorded. Now we're going to go to Chad Shank with live breaking news from the Bisbee Best of 2014 Police Beat. Chad, can you hear me? Uh, Yeah, what we're looking at is back in August, a caller advised of yelling coming from a house on Silver Street very early in the morning. The subjects were found being emotional over a movie. Police advised them to close the door and keep the volume down. Back to you, Doug. (laughs) <laughs> that is the Bisbee Police Beat Best of 2014 actual police calls. Uh, you know what, people? Listen, it's time to r- remain calm. Let's stop. We have to have a dialogue with the police and the people they serve. Don't go crazy. Don't get too emotional over movies. What else? Do we have in the best of 2014 Bisbee Observer Police Beat? It seems a woman in Palominas advised she'd been paying rent since March to someone who she thought was her landlady, but in fact was not. (laughs) We'll try to follow up on the rest of that story as we get breaking news coming in. Now, let's go to uh, what else uh, do we have in the uh, field of battle? Uh, It seems in July, a man wanted to file a complaint because he couldn't get his girlfriend out of his head. Actual Bisbee police beat (laughs) phone call. And one, I think a lot of our listeners will will say, I felt that way once too. I wish I could call the police on a girl that you can't get out of your head. But guess what? You can. You can in Bisbee, Arizona. You can call the police, and it'll make the paper. Uh, Anyway, one last story from the police beat. We have to go to break here because we have a giant sponsor coming in. Well, one, one more recent one in December. A caller advised that a mannequin head with a stake through it and a gunshot wound was left at the rear parking lot of the county attorney's office. Suspicions were dispelled, however, when it came to light that security was having a training session. A training session. So don't panic, people. Don't panic. Because there is a mannequin with a stake through its head and gunshot wounds to its face left at your door, don't worry. It might just be security training to put a stake through your head if you act up inappropriately. We'll be back after these words. TheShadyDell.com. That is where you stay. If you come to Bisbee and you're staying at the Shady Dell and I'm in town, I will have a beer with you. I won't hang out that long. We're not going to be good friends. I don't want you to fucking tell me you're going to kill yourself. But if you're staying at the ShadyDell.com, vintage trailer park with all 50s, 60s trailers that we live a mile away from and we look for reasons to go stay there. Come to theshadydell.com. Sponsored by... I might even come in and uh, clean your toilet. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) (coughs) Well, that's all right. We burned what we forget what we were saying. 
But yes, I do a bit about, uh, I'm not going to burn it now. I got to get paid for it. That's how I, but yeah, about the, the sadness of mental health care, just that I know through bingo. I don't know how the rest of the country works. I, I get my uh, mental health care through the VA and the way I described it to them and they pretty much agreed was that imagine being surrounded by people that are just drowning all around you. They've all gone under the water. You can grab them by the hair and pull them up. They start gasping for air. You've saved that one, but there's a, so you have to let that one go to grab another one. There's not, there's not a right answer. I don't think for it. I mean, it's, it's just rampant. There's fucking too many people and they should get rid of the suicide hotline so that people would just commit suicide and there wouldn't be so many problems. Then there's, yeah, then there's homicides. But uh, most people, not most people, I don't know the numbers, but the people that are incarcerated just to get them off the fucking streets, they're mentally ill. They, yeah, yeah. I don't know That's the answer. That's just the ones that are in the system. Imagine yeah. the ones that aren't. I mean, it's, my, my wife took me once because she, I was beyond her, you know, she knew I was beyond whatever and uh, took me in and told him you need to put him, lock him up for a while to help him out because he's, you know, got some issues. They said, we can't lock you up unless you have a specific plan for suicide. Do you have a specific plan for suicide? Get over here, bingo. I know, I know. This is a bit, have we talked about it on the podcast? What do you mean it's not on? It's a recorder. Yes, it is. We put it back on. I didn't know that. No, this is a bit like that. Even Hennigan last night said, all right, you have to shorten that bit. It's too preachy. And I've cut so much out of it. But bingo, one time she used to be able to get locked up because she was a danger to herself or others. And I said, she's going batshit between meds. And I go, just lie and say that you're suicidal. And they said, uh, well, if you tr attempted suicide, you, you have, have to, to have, have attempted tried. It. Yeah. Suicide. That's ridiculous. You have to have come with scars, he, slices, gunshot. And he's got way better crazy. care than you through the VA, which is, that's how bad a care bingo gets because the VA is renowned for being oh, shitty. Yeah. Yeah. He well, had to have a specific plan laid out before he could get locked up for his own. Well, my response to that was, do you, they said, do you have a specific plan? And I says, well, I was going to wrap my head in towels. And then I was going to put a few garbage bags over my head. Then I have a pistol and I was going to put it underneath and shoot myself in the head while laying in the bathtub. So that way I didn't create a mess that wasn't easily to clean up. And How's I didn't create a plan? traumatic experience for people to see, you know, my family when they found me. For the listener, Chad is not embellishing. He's not a comic. He's telling you exactly that's, what he said. That's exactly what I told them. And they did not admit me. She had to take me to the civilian. Boring! <laughs> they had to, she had to take me to civilian doctors and then they admitted me. But... Yeah, Bingo couldn't get locked up unless she tried. Yeah. Do you have her... a specific plan for suicide? Yeah, me or you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're you're easy. We'll we'll get you right in. Well, and that's the the other thing is that for some people it's not a you know if you I'm trying not to commit suicide. I contemplate it often. I'm trying not to. So if you tell me that I have to have tried it, if I tried it, I'm done. I'm yeah. not gonna have to try more than once. I mean, I'm not you know. It's a yeah. It's a. But we we always come to the last conclusion of the night over white Russians. Well, how do you stop this as a social ill? Don't have kids. It always every every topic we discuss, we get to the end of a drink and go, don't procreate because it's overpopulation. <laughs> yep. This is a, when you're in a town of forty people. Well, if someone takes care of that person. Someone talks to them like they're a human being. And the more people you have, the less human they become and more like weeds they are. They just, yeah, don't answer the phone. Let them kill themselves. Fuck them. Which um, I agree with completely till it comes to someone like you. <laughs> in, in the Army, I had to go through a lot of uh, classes, suicide prevention classes about stuff. And it was actually one of your bits that fucking hit when you said, you know, it's 
young people shouldn't commit suicide but you know if, if you're, the movie's half yeah, over if the, and it sucked if, every second it's not gonna get better <laughs> there's certain instances where it's better i've convinced the suicide hotline that it's probably a better idea that i'm dead i've made them question their own value of their own life i mean huh? it's uh it, it's weird to be in that position where you're crazy you're mentally ill and you're smarter than the people that are trained to help you well and i guess like you said it, you'd be like a good lawyer if i was going to be any kind of profession i would probably be a good lawyer because i'm hard to argue with and when they tell me well there's you know you have your family to think about and they say all right now when people die you people get over that i've seen it all the time everybody sees it people get over it when you live with a person who's mentally unstable you don't get over that that keeps fucking up your life every day if the person was dead then three months later they'd be like eh, life's kind of fucking normal now i don't have to deal with all this bullshit but if you don't they just have to keep putting up with your shit every day so i remember it, doing a bit i remember doing a bit after 9 11 because my dad died in 2011 in march before all that and never forget 9 11 i go think about the families of the victims, when you have that bumper sticker, my dad died earlier this year. And if everyone had a bumper sticker and every radio commercial break mentioned, don't forget, and don't forget your dad died of colon cancer in March. Like, I'm trying to forget, like I'm moving on with my life. It's all right, I'm a man now. I don't wanna, don't keep forcing never forget in my face. Yeah. My mother's going to die sometime. I'm going to deal with that. Time Stop. heals all things. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a bumper sticker reminding me, saying never forget. Forgetting is good about a lot of stuff. Same concept. I have a lot of stuff that uh, you go, you, you're, you're chatting with an old friend, and, and you, then one weird fat girl that you lied to, and then you probably gave her herpes. And you're like, oh, jeez. Oh, thank God I forget that. <laughs> Let's forget that again. <laughs> It wasn't you, honey. You weren't fat at the time. <laughs> All right. Joby's here. We're shutting this down. Uh, this might go out as a podcast all on its own, yeah. Jaylee, because that, that was a nice. I came in. No, no, no. It was a fucking. I, th I thought that was a fantastic uh, was moment. And uh, we'll find another one. And so, I ruined it. So, <laughs> it's only 10 to 10. Please hold. And that was New Year's Eve. Hey! Happy New Year! Year. Uh, we uh, we closed it by uh, we haven't done this in years. Where we hey, you know what? Hey, if you're a sad, lonely loser out there, like I am most of my life, send us your Skype, and we did a bunch of Skype Happy New Years for an hour and a half, and actually reached nine a lot people. Of news. Well, a lot of it. No one knows how to use Skype. How far I away think. was the most furthest person? We get a couple from England. Oh. A couple good looking girls from England, which was weird, but maybe we're just drunk. Yeah, it must have been enough. One girl could sing her ass off. I don't know I'm who that sorry. was. And if you're listening to this podcast, you are fucking great. And uh, yeah, it was fun. And uh, at first, we first started doing it, and Brian Hennigan, who is chugging. <laughs> Chugging right now, chugging champagne. No, no, it's Prosecco. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Do you, you think it's some sort of ignoramus? <laughs> the first couple phone calls, Skype calls, he's like, okay, next. Hurry it up, next. Go on. And I'm like, all right, Brian, you can't be negative. The whole point of this is to like <laughs> spread some goodwill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking talk to fans that I usually run out the back door. Next. And then he ran out like, a, well, okay, if I'm not wanted. Not and that was, uh, then then everything went That well. was uncalled for, I felt. <laughs> but at the same time, I was very happy to go back to my room and look at Travel Zoo and Travel Pony and Jet Setter and a number of other travel sites that I find intoxicating. <laughs> as well as alcohol, which you find <laughs> intoxicating. Well, We're pretty shit-faced. Uh -huh. I, uh, yeah. I feel strong. I was drinking Jägermeister just because some of the people we Skyped yeah, that, fucking, there. that one creepy looking guy from uh I think he's from Phoenix with the hot wife. What? I missed that one too. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, crowded yeah. in there. I ducked out. Yeah, yeah. Uh anyway, 
It was it was a fun uh, New Year's Eve, and you, Chad Shank, Chad Shank, just got a text <laughs> which says, which uh, is the only reason. It's only funny. It was it was funny enough that I go, oh wait, we have not checked in for this podcast. Well, I got a group message from one of my kids. <laughs> that, what, what? How old is the kid? Uh, they're of age, the like twenty. Right. Three is the one messaged right. me first, okay. but it was a group message to me and eighteen other people. How many children do you have? I have four. Okay, one's well, his. Don't hold this, it against the me, rest yeah. are not his. This is this is not kin folk. This is okay. anyway. But I, I raised these kids since they're like five. But anyways, my son sends a message to group message: Happy New Year. My other son, who's twenty one, responds to the group message: Hey, bro. Bill might have more Molly. Did you want me to see for you? Oops. So I responded with, hey, you know this is a group message, right, dumbass? Happy New Year. But I haven't got a response yet. So apparently everybody in the group message now knows that my son knows where to get Molly. You know what? Let's start hanging out with your son rather than you. Yeah. All you bring, all you bring are tales of... Violence. I never have and any depression. Molly. And violence no Molly and, whatsoever. Violence and cellos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm drink. Happy New Year. I'm just, drink. You just, just texted, texted me. <laughs> you, but you have to stamp that type of grammar out. <laughs> when they're already grown, they're morons. You can't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this podcast. I don't think we have anything to add. It was a fun night. We're going to go back and fall down. There's people we don't even know at the house. Mm. There's beanie weenies that fucking Joby. Joby, don't ever fucking pour a beer into things because you think it makes it better. It's beanie weenies. It's what? the, the most. Know. What does what a beanie weenie mean? Hot dogs <laughs> and fucking baked beans. And he what? pours beer into it to make it better. And you don't pour beer into shit to make it better. It's not barbecue. You're not at a competition. We want comfort food. We have to fall down this drunk. Joby will never listen to this. He'll never know to not pour beer into chili or beanie weenies or everything. This is not a chili cook-off, Joby. See, that's what I said early on. This is a great way I to said start every, 2015. No, every, every update, we should just talk shit behind. Remember? There I we said, go. well, just talk shit behind someone's back. And now I'm talking shit behind Joby's back. Don't pour beer into shit. Don't start fires on windy days. Oh yeah, he fucking did that too, Joby. That's an old, that pretty that, 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 fucking that's, Viking. That's an old Navajo cut. saying: "Don't start fires on windy days." That's, I, how, that's how they lost to Custer. That's, or, or sorry, that's how they beat. Custer. That's why Brian moved here because he's very interested in Native American studies, mm -hmm. and he loves his wife. All right, that's a <laughs> his American wife. That's enough of this podcast. No more lies. <laughs> All right. Hey, Happy New Year, you fucking cunts. Stop calling now. <laughs> yeah. No, you can call on Skype all day. I haven't used it since the last time I retired from comedy in the UK when I had to use Skype. And that boop, 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 boop oh, is really? actually a sound that depresses me. I hear it in movies. Oh, oh really? I remember when I wanted to kill myself in the really? UK. All right. You've made it a good new year. We opened with a brand new Mishka Shibali song. Am I the only one drinking tonight? And tonight I'm not. And we're going to close with a different song from the Matoid because it's New Year's Eve. So we'll close with Funeral Party by the Matoid. See you next year. Woo! One, two, three, seven, get! And the gasket is ready huh. But inside Looks nice and steady Let's play it for the man For the last time Play it for the man Farewell Play it for the man For the last time Play it for the man Praise the Lord And we got to go on with the funeral party Got to go on with the funeral party And the 
and the casket starts to move huh. Everybody's crying We all got the groove Let's play it for the man For the last time, play it for the man Farewell Play it for the man For the last time, play it for the man Praise the Lord, I'm the God